Nation, what is Nation. up? I'm like, I'm jacked to be here today. I have so much energy, like way oh. more than I should have right now. Swing Nation, yeah. What is up? <laughs> I'm. I can feel the yearning for golf in my loins. Like, I mean, uh, I mainly because we got 12 inches of snow in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, in the last well, like three days ago. Oh. It was pretty rough. Pretty rough. It's more than here for sure. <sighs> We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Um, today was sunny and it got like into the 20s, which. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've just got to hang on for like two more months. Now, baby yeah. will come in three weeks. And uh, so then the waiting will get easier because I won't know what to do with myself because I'll have a newborn baby. Like that. there will be not a lot of. Uh, not a lot of like, hmm, I, I just can't wait to golf because I'll be like changing mm -hmm. diapers and wiping, uh, what's that, marconium? The, I get like marconium, I think that's yeah, what that's Macon um, it's, it's, Yeah, I think it's <laughs> marconium, but yeah. And uh, that, and I get that and colostrum mixed up, but both are interesting products yeah. of birth. Yeah. <laughs> they are, they are. <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah that's the kind of energy we're, we got rolling we got rolling today but nation thank you we're not going to be spending uh all show talking about afterbirth um as fun as that <laughs> might be <laughs> we'll talk about whiskey and we got plenty to talk about we're going to do a bottle pop of barrel bourbon batch 26 and talk about the barrel craft spirits lineup uh we're going to talk about uh our latest podcast podcast episode which was all about bourbon hunting in Louisville. Make sure we pronounce Louisville right. I, I had a conversation right. with my barber about this the other day, how to pronounce Louisville. Um, maybe we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about getting ready yeah. for our inaugural barrel pick, which is coming up fast, actually faster than we thought it was. A lot so, faster. Very fast. Next week in fast. Next week in fact. Man, it sounds like I'm drunk. I can't speak. I haven't had it any does. alcohol. <laughs> I have had no alcohol. I'm soups high on life right now. Um, this oh my gosh. tiny little uh, pour is me getting ready for the podcast. And uh, that is the only alcohol <laughs> I've had today. I've actually been taking it easy this week. I can't deal with not having a hat on now. After I took the headband thing off, I might have to put the headband thing back on. Yeah, well, maybe it'll Just, be our thing. I can't. Uh, no, it will not become our thing. But <laughs> won't be our thing. To, I was hoping you guys would be able to see these glasses. These are actually my sons. Let me see if I can get it in the camera. They got a Batman. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, there. My son's Batman glasses, which are pretty dark. <laughs> And your your glasses are probably better though. You know, I would take those. They're pretty rad. All right, uh, Brian, what are you drinking tonight? What's the what's the lube palette lube? I grabbed a new bottle of Starlight Bourbon from um, from Liquor Barn this weekend. That was a, actually, um, I guess, another local group pick. Let me see if I can get it. zoom in on this. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. This is a bourbon brotherhood pick locally um, nice. that I, I saw a couple of people post about. Okay. Uh, so, I, so I picked it up and you could tell that we've enjoyed it in a, an all right amount. That's all right. Yeah, sweet. So it's pretty cool. That is what I'm on. What about you? Yeah. The bullet blender select. I've been going a little bit slower on this one. Um, really, really awesome blend from bullet, you know, feel like I have to disclaimer every time I hold that up. I'll stop. You guys have heard me disclaimer bullet enough. So, uh, But the bourbon in that bottle is really good. And they're still on the shelf in Kentucky. So. I'm sure there are other places too, but I saw them when I was down there a few weeks ago. It was a month ago now that I was down there. It's kind of crazy. It, yeah, it's been a bit. <sighs> All right, squad, nation, ground rules for tonight. Not really any. Um, just remember that if you want us to see a question, a comment, make sure you at me or at Brian. Brian, what's your handle on here again? <laughs> my name is Brian. Oh, yeah. So you can at Droopy Whiskey or at my name is Brian. That way we see your comments. I'll if change wanna... it. I almost tried to, but that started messing with pick sticker ideas. So. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which, I mean, we got to figure that out. We'll talk with Nation and get their ideas as well yeah. um, regarding our... When we get to that 
part of the evening. So if you guys want to get your comments read, uh, questions asked, make sure you at one of us. If you really want to make sure we get to it, make sure you throw a super chat on there. I mean, that's it's a good way to support the content if you're digging it. Um, if you dig this channel, Droopy Whiskey channel, if you dig Brian's pretty sick photos on abandoned bourbon, and if you're liking the brand new Entry Proof podcast. Well, I say brand new. We've got four episodes now. We're like seasoned veterans. Almost. Zachary Jones just said test. Yep, I saw it, Zach. You did it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> uh yeah and so if uh you can support through super chats and then we'll read your comment for sure another way you can support the channel and get access to the upcoming barrel pick which you may get access even if you're just on a live stream because this is our first pick but it's not guaranteed if you want guaranteed access on barrel picks then you need to go over to patreon uh in the next few days here i'll be throwing the barrel pick priorities on those tiers um but if you are in the if you're in the eight tier or above, you're probably going to be getting picks for quite some time, unless we end up in the hundreds of Patreon supporters, which would be sick. Then we're just going to have to do a buttload of barrel picks. That's right. Which sounds like tons of fun. Which sounds, yep. Uh, the third way, third and final way you can support the channel right now is uh, if you want a t-shirt, like not the one I have on, but a cool one that says keep it neat. It's got a whiskey glass on it. Um, you can click the Etsy link below. I'm pretty sure I put that on there. Let me check. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's enough of the um, pining for support, which we're not doing. If you just want to consume this, no problem. That's fine. No, no pressure whatsoever. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, last piece of business. Uh, let's keep the profanity down. Uh, no judgment or anything, but just it's it's uh, this isn't all our welcome channel, so just like uh, keep it chill, you know. Unless you're under 21, then I'm sorry, you're just not welcome, <laughs> right? Yes, but, uh, so, so that's actually you, a good point. Is there, a, is there a rule in place that you have to say that you see how there's like a lot of accounts and pages you have to, yeah, they, they have that on there, you have to submit the bubble. Yeah, no. If you're not selling alcohol, then there's not a 21 requirement. So even on Patreon, because we don't directly sell the alcohol, which is against their terms and conditions, um, there's no 21 or over requirement. Although highly recommended. We would recommend if you're not of drinking age, you wait. Um, wait until you're 21. That's good. And we're um, fine. We'll be here waiting for you. You can invite mm -hmm. us to your party. Total abstinence. Bring a bottle to pop. Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. No doubt. Uh, uh, the other one would be if you're a recovering alcoholic, you probably shouldn't watch this either. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, unless it's cool for you too, but like, if it gets to the point where right. you're like, uh, you know, there's Why a lot of you... really funny videos. Watch the video of that car sliding down the hill in Nashville. Oh, I need to watch that. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so he has a truck. He was pulling out of his driveway, went sideways, and just started. Zoom. Oh, man. it's. I mean, the weather's been rough. I saw you guys in the chat talking about um, Texas, um, where my family is. Uh, thankfully, the folks in Wichita Falls, or at least my parents, haven't had any power outages. Uh, they're all good. My brother in Amarillo, he's good. But yeah, they aren't going anywhere. I'll tell you that. Um, once the snow hits the road and accumulates, it's just staying there until the sun melts. Um, but I know many people in many other places in that neck of the woods are not so fortunate. So yeah, not great. Not a great situation there. Uh, as much as I hate the uh, sheer volume of snow that we get here in Wisconsin, at least we've got plows and salt and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Mm. Uh, Brian, tell me about your whiskey adventures this week. Did you have anything? Did you you shop at all? You get around or anything interesting come up in your whiskey verse? Not not too not too much. It was uh, just kind of nabbing that starlight is uh, is about it. I've been mm -hmm. kind of on the hunt for one of our followers on the Instagram. Um, I would keep that on the down low unless you want to be on the hunt for all of our followers on Instagram <laughs> or YouTube. Well, I uh, know I was trying to figure out they're coming to town 
And so, oh, uh, nice, nice. Try to keep uh, an eye out for a little bit, and uh, that's it. Um, it it obviously has been the weather, like you said, it's been a little nasty. I was hoping for maybe some drops at Four Roses. Mm -hmm. um, no, uh, no such thing. Looks like they've been uh, closed most of this last week. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah, just because of the weather, you mean? Like they're like, ah, yeah, we're not even gonna. Huh. Yeah, both the nice. distillery and Cox's Creek. So just know, you know, today is usually the day that I would venture down there. No dice. Yeah, I actually, I've only been in one liquor store all week. I went in one today. Um, one of my regular stops just to chat the fellows up. But we're not getting a lot of new stuff around here. Of course, uh, Bardstown products got distributed uh, in Wisconsin. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't mind going out and trying to find another Discovery Batch 4 because they're amazing. Uh, highly recommend. I saw Chris, I think, was the name of the dude in the chat who was drinking Discovery Batch 4 tonight. That's a great, great poll. Uh, Charles. Charles is drinking this guy, <laughs> Discovery Batch 4. I don't know. Uh, Tom, um, I, uh, I saw my buddy messaged <coughs> me this morning saying that it had dropped in. Um, I told him to grab me one, but I don't think that's going to happen it's not it's not like that it's it not just like that just dropped in ohio like it hadn't and apparently whoa whoa apparently yeah that's pretty neat man that's neat that sure is neat <laughs> kyle says are the barrel proof four roses relatively available by you bikey at the distillery yeah, so, or cox's creek yeah so they're the there were maybe two years ago, I saw a lot more, and maybe it's the season. I saw a lot more in stores around town. You know, the, the Cox's Smokers outlet, there's a period of time where there was some OESOs that just kind of sat on the shelf. I'd go in and buy a couple of cases, uh, just costing them to people to say, did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Um, mm. That does not happen anymore, really. But yeah, the distillery, um, I say regularly, but that might come and go too. But I would say generally every week they do put out uh, some picks. So no telling if they're younger, or if they're older, or what the recipe is. But um, usually Lawrenceburg will have some, and they generally differ from the ones they put out of the Barrel Reserve in Cox's Creek. So, yeah, I would say. So, yeah, for them to be non-existent in other states, they are very much existent here. Yep. Yeah, if you're able to, well, if you're able to snag one, you're only like a one per. So I would say snag me one for when we meet up next week. That's probably not gonna. Well, happen. I'll uh, next time next time they pop out, I'll let you know what recipes. You can tell me if you want something. They allow you to grab two. Oh, day. okay. Well, that's pretty good. That's good for them. It's very generous. All right, um, I'm just hitting my second warm up here. I like to get you know some variety of flavors. Although I'm in the same family as I think we're gonna be in a minute, so we can yeah. start talking about. Our brand of the night, which is when I say brand of the night, uh, we're not being paid to talk about this. Just as a point of clarification, we would tell you if we were not that I would mind being paid to talk about barrel craft spirits because it's dope. Anyone. Yeah. <clears throat> so how many barrel products have you had, Brian? Uh, I would probably say four. Okay. 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 Yeah, on, really, Alex, are you are you pouring are you pouring barrel right now or you're I, waiting? I'm about to. We're talking about it right now. Yeah, I will end up. I got another one, but then I'll oh, end up great. going into the old dovetail. Yeah, what's round two of your warm up there before we get into? I the barrel? did a little bit of uh, Knob Creek that I helped pick. It was it's like one of the only ones that I've done where they've sent a kit to the store, mm. and we picked uh, we picked that way. So yeah, I don't I mean that's better than nothing. Model. Yeah, for sure. Not ideal in my mind. Like go to the distillery if you can, but I mean I live in Milwaukee with distilleries like seven hours away. All right, my round two warm up. Granted, these are very small pours. Was the Remus batch three? I just have a little bit left of this, but I have a hard time staying away because I like it so much. <sighs> And, uh, you know, that there's, again, I, I mentioned I'm trying to, like, 
start with some whiskeys that I think will be similar to what I'm going to have. So I can have these benchmarks in my mind because I've not tried barrel batch 26, but barrel has plenty of MGP in it. So this particular blend, which is not unusual for barrel is a blend of Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee whiskeys, bourbons specifically in batch 26 of bourbon. Um, so <clears throat> barrel craft spirits, they're blenders predominantly. They have a distillery now. Um, I doubt that their own juice is making their way into any of their blends right now, but they, they've got quite a few different products. They've got a line of bourbons, so they just create these batches of bourbons. I think they're on batch like 28 right now. I know at least you can get 27. They may be on to 28. So they create these batches of bourbons. They send them out, and then that's it. Like when it's gone, it's gone. Then they're on to the next batch. And their whole deal is we don't care if it tastes the same. Batch it, like yeah, batch in and batch out. They really right. are just shooting to create a unique experience with every bottling, which to me is kind of cool. And you got to have a lot of faith in your well. Number one, your ability as a blender. Number two, your consumer base to be like, we're going to create a different whiskey every dang time. And we're going to build our brand that way. That's kind of a novel concept. Is any, do you, I can't think of anybody else doing anything like that. I mean, that's, um, it's hard to say. I mean, what's, it, it's hard to say. Like what, what is Jay Mattingly do? Like, don't well, they kind of do that? Dude, I don't even know like, what they do. They're not just like what about Blood Oath? Them. Isn't Blood Oath kind of like that? It wouldn't be like the Four yeah, Roses LE but, be kind of like that. Like a lot of limited edition products, aren't they? Kind yeah, of yeah, but that's all premise? that Barrel's doing though is the deal. Is I mean, outside of Dovetail, which is a repeated release, like Barrel doesn't have a standard bourbon that's the same always. Like all those other brands you mentioned have a standard bourbon. That's what about the old, same what about always. Old Carter? I mean, Old Carter's done Dickler, okay. they've done MGP, they've done light whiskey. Yeah, that they would probably be comparable, not near the scale of barrel. Kentucky so. Owl. Okay. All right. Maybe there's more than I thought. <laughs> Do you want me to keep going? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because it's helpful to in the discussion. Uh, so, yeah, Kentucky Owl would be similar. Uh, I'm trying to think of other brands. That Those are both kind of like this. Yeah. Uh, Doc Swinson. Mm, they have some pretty standard releases, though, too. Yeah, I never see them locally, so mm -hmm. I don't necessarily okay. know what their portfolio look like. Uh, what yeah. about? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, there are. I feel like there are a couple that are kind of like that. I'm trying to message my. Okay, I was trying to message my uh, my friend Timothy Van Riper. Uh, I went over to his house a long time ago, and he let me try barrel nine, and. Mm. It is delicious, and I would. It, it, I mean, we're way past it now, like you mentioned. Yeah, way but, past. But um, I would love to. I'd love to locate one. Yeah, I had one of the ones that ended up on Whiskey Advocates list, and I meant to look this up earlier. Shame on me, but I forgot what batch it was. So I'm gonna look in my Instagram now, find out what batch of barrel was it that I had had that was on the whiskey list so whiskey advocate list oh here we go wait for it um 18 yep badge 18 so not only are they cranking out all these different bourbons in you know, different batches of bourbon then they have rye they released vatted malt i think in 2019 so that's malt whiskeys from all over the place um they have uh, their American whiskey releases. They have their Infinite Barrel project, which is pretty cool. Uh, should do a show at some point on uh, Infinite Bottles, uh, which I've never done. Well, I, I take it back. I did one for like three months. But then I was like, I really like these whiskeys that I'm dumping into this Infinite Bottle. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I just want to drink them. So I didn't. I stopped. I stopped it. Um, yeah, but the Infinite Barrel Listen, Project's kind of the same way in that they just dump a little bit of barrels for, of all kinds of whiskeys into this Infinite Barrel Project, and then they periodically bottle some of it. So that's a pretty cool concept. Uh, I don't know anybody doing that. Have you tried any of those Infinite Infinite Barrels? Mm -mm. Huh. 
I'm going to do an episode uh, more break, like breaking down eloquently barrel and why I think it's so, so dope. We're talking about it now, but I'll do it more in the droopy whiskey show. A uh, friend of mine up in Mequon uh, has, well, Matty Pletz, who I, I mentioned uh, on the show before. He's, he's a, he's a sample feeder for sure. Um, but he's got a bunch of barrel products. And so we'll be able to do a larger tasting of barrel in that. What's the deal with barrel craft spirits episode. Uh, but yeah, they've got all these really unique products and dovetail. Um, give me the full marketing rundown off that bottle of yours. Yeah. So it is finished. It, it's a, it looks like about 10,000 bottles in the run. Um, it's distilled in Indiana and Tennessee. I forget if it says anything about age, but either way, um, it is whiskey finished in rum port Dunn Vineyards Cabernet barrels, uh, but it's 123.8. So this is, I believe, the first batch. I think they have a second one. A um, lot of people not a fan of this product. There's an um, equal number of people who are huge fans of that product, though. It's one of yeah. those that seems to be really, really polarizing. And I think I personally want to say it's because, I mean, some people might just say it's a rubbish finish, you know, but I think the main people who would say that they don't like it is because it's, it's very sweet, but that's mm. why I like it. Mm. Yeah. I don't mind a sweet one. No, I, I have to get definitely the on the sweet side. Yeah. Some of their stuff too. If you're a fan of the barrel brand, some of their bourbons can be spicier. Like they, it seems like they like a spicy, spicy profile. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if you like barrel and then you go to dovetail and it's candy sweet and you're like, nah, I don't know. Well, that makes sense to me, I guess. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I really like this brand because I think they took a <coughs> fairly gutsy stab and then they, they did this thing with scale where they're just like, let's release all these different batches. Hope people stay with it. And people have, I mean, the brand's been really successful. I just wish it was distributed in Wisconsin. It's not. <laughs> like Wisconsin gets garbage distribution. Um, it is right. de- just across the border, though. I can go down to Binnie's in Chicago and get it there. Or if I really want it that badly, <laughs> you, I, you can also get it actually shipped to Wisconsin. That's how I got this bottle right here is Mash and Grape uh, online mm-hmm. retailer. Um, they are Barrel's big partner for online sales. And I got this from them. I actually got a disc like it was like the first order 50% 15% off. So yeah, I paid basically MSRP for it. It was awesome. And this was the one that this was in like Fred Minnick's top two whiskeys of last or bourbons of last year. So oh, wow. um, yeah, really jacked. Which one is you batch 26. Cool. So this one, before we bottle pop this sucker, it's a uh, bottle 3020 out of I have no idea how many. Nine years old, so everything in here is a minimum of nine years. Uh, 112.64 proof, 56.32% alcohol by volume. And again, it's Tennessee, Indiana, and Kentucky. So in all likelihood, Dickel, although not necessarily Dickel. Indiana is almost certainly MGP. And Kentucky, who knows? Maybe Beam, maybe Barton, maybe Heaven Hill. Really depends. And we know there's a lot of 15-year-old whiskey making making the rounds. And Barrels, I mean, they picked up a lot of 15-year-old whiskey. They release the 15-year-old bourbon every year. Mm-hmm. Which that was one of Fred Minnick's top bourbons of the year, too, when they first released the uh, 15-year-old. Maybe that was 2018. Maybe, maybe that's about right. Yeah, I think so. So here we go. We'll pop this. Solid pop, a little squeaky. That's a seven out of ten on the pop. Your your pop was old bottle for sure. <laughs> Nothing on the neck sniff there. I love their bottles though. I think they're simple, but they uh, you can just see the whiskey well. I like that a minimal label with plenty of whiskey view. Yeah, concur. Yeah. Very clean. Like in contrast to the bullet where the glass is, there's not a lot of clarity to the glass. It's almost blurry. This one seems like there's whoever made this bottle, the glass maker, blower, former, 
did a great job. Very ele elegant. Elegant, simple, mid-century, modern. But what obviously matters most is what's in the what's in the glass. I'm not getting much on the nose yet. Uh oh. Well, you know. I'm gonna give it a second. I want to be respectful. I don't want to jump into this and expect too much too soon. Like we're just getting to know each other. Oh, that's a very Fred Minnick thing to say. Hey, should I break out my Fred Minnick impression again? You wow. Should not. Wow. I mean, I think it needs to open up a little bit. Um, getting all kinds of fruity notes with some some nut butter. Oh, that nut that was a good one right there. Nut butter. <laughs> Uh, orange you gotta, is you gotta very zesty. You gotta bust out the childhood memory. You gotta set set up set up the set up the memory that no one can relate to. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I had a very relatable childhood. I I don't have a lot of stories of like oh yeah nobody would get that. Um, yeah, I could fish for them now, but it wouldn't be very stimulating for the crew. I've not checked the comments in a while. While I knows this. Um, Oh yeah, you had a really good one that you missed. Um, that asked if this was the Australian Open tribute show. So uh, yeah, uh, you got uh, Federer and I don't, dude. I know very little. I know older tennis better, like Jimmy Connors, Andre Agassi, Pete Sampras, uh, McEnroe. Evan Evan Swift had asked, "What's up on the shelf uh, tonight?" I tonight. have uh, a whole slew. Of Knob Creek picks, nice. Mainly because Drew uh, was talking or used the photo for entry proof of the twelve-year cast strength uh, Knob Creek that he got while he was in Louisville, mm. and uh, I just decided to throw some Knob Creeks up. So down here I had, as you were talking about opening barrel, again I figured I'd grab dovetail, and I just got out uh, all a bunch of my finished products just in case I was going to start going off on finished whiskey. What are your thoughts on finished whiskey? Have you talked about that yet? No, no, we have not gone deep on finished whiskey. I mean, we can kind of we, we can kind of chatter about it right now, but I think it would be good to revisit another time, like a an yeah. episode dedicated to finishing. Get a large tasting of finished whiskeys, some of the more prevalent yeah. ones. I've got uh, while while you're nosing, I'll just I'll just talk about a few that Go I have. By a few that I have, I mean the few that I have here are like the few that I have. So, um, VIP bourbon. Are you familiar? No. Are you familiar with all. VIP? No. Uh, so it is big red liquors product. So um, they did this exclusively for people on the VIP list for big red liquors out of Indianapolis area, I believe. Okay. Um, it's Indiana Street bourbon whiskey finished in Imperial Stout barrels. This is the second edition of VIP bourbon that they did. So it's eight year MGP uh, done by, I wanted to say it was like Heartland or something. Heart, Yeah. Heartland Distillers, Indianapolis, Indiana. Eight year MGP finished in stout barrels. A uh, nice. little, little dark, but kind of fun. Uh, and then the rest are the BBC ones. Oh, so so they're probably Chateau. total, total bangers then. Chateau de la Baude, we got the Goodwood um, Brandy Barrel Honey Ale finish. And then um, my, the Apple Brandy, which I am I keep not popping because it's so good. I'm worried I'm just going to crush it. Mm. But um, anyway, I figured, depending on how long we talked and uh, depending on how my tooth went after... Uh, tasting the dovetail, I might jump into some other finished ones. Yeah, don't blame you. Don't blame me about that. Uh, Remus, the some folks asked which batch of Remus. That was Remus batch three. Remus repeal reserve batch three. Um, very good, very orangey. Which actually, it, it, it was like a prequel to the amount of orange I'm pulling out of this barrel bourbon. We'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, Fred says he's enjoying the prideful goat. Uh, he bottle popped tonight. 
prideful goat. No, I don't know what that is. Where is that from? Um, have to Google that. Kyle retracted a message. Kyle's probably had too much to drink already. Uh-oh. <laughs> I feel like he does uh, that a lot. Kyle, yeah, he does actually retract his messages. Kyle says he uh, he heard Starlight has some cool finished stuff. Well, yeah. Um, you know, Brian was sending me a pick of a new label they dropped so we're we're uh we're stoked to taste we'll talk about that in a minute but try not to go into this barrel pick with a lot of preconception of what we should buy um but we're willing to hear from nation too about uh you know if you're if you're a starlight fan and you're a patreon supporter and you're looking to get a barrel or a bottle of the first barrel pick from the entry proof podcast which is us you know, is there anything you're interested in? All right, let's break down this barrel bourbon batch 26. Um, it reminds me uh, on the nose uh, of my Dickel 11 year bottled and bond. Actually, the Tennessee whiskey shows up on the nose, orange, and if you're looking for it, Flintstone vitamin, not heavy there's some rice spice there to help balance it out which dickel does not have any rice spice in general like rice but they have rye in their mash bill but the rye just doesn't come through like it doesn't deliver much on the palate i get some wood presence which is nice some age some some oak not very sweet but it's so orangey zesty uh which i don't mind necessarily it just depends on how chalky, which when I actually took an initial sip of this, I didn't get much chalk on the mouthfeel. So to the palate again. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of orange. <laughs> I mean, it's probably the most orange forward bourbon I've ever had. That sounds delicious. Um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 unique. Uh, it is not what I expected based on like when I had read reviews of this. Um, there is absolutely zero on the bottle to indicate any kind of flavor notes I should look for. And it's been a while since I read any reviews. So I'm going in like totally, I'm like mentally nude on this. Um, sweetness level is, is pretty decent. Um, it's not very, uh, it doesn't have a lot of age depth on it. Like nothing sticks out in terms of like rich, like maple syrup, brown sugar, sweet oak. It's not really there. Uh, it's certainly not young. Man, I'm trying to find something beyond the orange. It's just so... I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to have to come back to it because the orange is so prevalent and intense. It's hard for me to taste past it right now. Yeah. All right. You you tell us about that dovetail, and then I'm going to try and find some stuff in here. I'm struggling. Yeah, it actually brings up, it actually brings up another interesting potential topic, which is, again, so, I mean, my bottle's getting kind of kind of low. Got a couple other ones up here that are here and here that are getting a little on the low side too. You know, um, as I taste it, it tastes a, a little bit different than I once remember it tasting and makes me wonder like at what point, how long can you have a bottle open? You were talking about a, a, a nice deep open pop that I had on the bottle, right? Mm. You know, I'd love to talk some time about old bottles and how they start to change. But, um, man, it's on the nose. It's still nice. It still brings uh, like a little bit. It's like a mix of both fresh wood, but also um, some like slightly warm leather, some slightly warm oak. Uh I guess I could have some like presence of some of the finishing. It's kind of hard to say. I would say maybe it, it plays in like a little bit more saturation of sweetness. It kind of like if anything, it's got some kind of sweet notes kind of soaked into both like a, a fresh wood meets warm 
wood leather kind of thing on the nose kind of nice not not incredibly inviting but some good stuff there and then the palette it's uh it's it pops there with some nice brightness and then kind of explodes with a lot of sweetness i feel like it doesn't soak onto the palate it's like not like you're saying it's not syrupy it's not really chewy i think that that pop of brightness kind of maybe prevents that from happening but uh it does continue more with the the port than anything i could say like it does remind me of like uh midwinter night's dram a little bit mm. with um the flavor that is lingering on the palate but overall it is very desserty it's it's growing a little bit more rich yet still kind of spiced with like a lot of linger it 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 weighs on the palate when it lingers if that makes sense it's not like syrupy while you're drinking it but it starts to kind of cling as you're sipping it's nice all right it's nice i feel like that that pop makes it a little bit disjointed i didn't really notice that before that's why i wonder if it's time that the bottle's been open or, or just something i haven't noticed before yeah hmm. i'm getting some flack in the chat uh, about my the orange headband maybe influencing my perception of flavor i doubt it I doubt it. <laughs> it does match the band on your bottle. So I yeah. actually do think perhaps Which you I got did some this on purpose. Orange in my shirt. I mean, there's a don't put color coordination past me. Okay. So here's a funny thing. <laughs> I saw on uh the Bourbon Junkies posted some they had a card from Jamie Sears, right? That's his name. Yeah. Uh and it, it was a man card, it was a metallic man card in their wallet or something. <laughs> I just had to laugh at that. I'd be like, you know, I actually carried a, a card from the Chicago Metro in my wallet for a long time because I would have to go down to Chicago for work. And so like I have the Metro card. And I'm like, that's definitely fitting. <laughs> like that's I'll just carry a Metro card. I don't need a man card. A Metro card is more than appropriate for me. All right. We got JD um, in the chat asking if we know what Starlight proof range it will be for the pick. Uh, I don't. I don't. Um, I will say I feel like most of their picks are the high 100s to the low 110s. I think the majority of their picks stay in that range. I think they, depending on who distilled it, they're all cut a little differently. And so their proofs kind of maybe fall in line with that. It's really hard to say. You know, it, it really depends. They do a lot of stuff. At Starlight, they do a lot with what barrels they're putting stuff in. We've talked about this before. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Too deep. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Don't worry. Um, Fine, great I'll question, stop. though. That was a Back great question. Barrel. Yeah. Um, it, Jeremy Sears, I'm so sorry. If he showed up in the chat, I'd be ashamed of myself. All right, I have some more notes on this barrel now. It was helpful to let it sit, come back to it. Uh, it's certainly still orange, uh, but then I get a mild pumpkin bread. Like it's got a, if you get a solid pumpkin bread, that's got a really smooth texture to it. Like that kind of sweetness where it's like, it's more of a, like a standard sugar, you know, kind of sweetness, but then it's got this, this, this uh, roasty toasty kind of pumpkin. Um, so get candied, candied orange, very sweet orange, very smooth pumpkin bread. And then some leather, right? There's there's some leather retro impact on there. So that's what I got. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, really, really solid, really interesting. Uh, different from anything else I have open, which I appreciate. I like to have variety in my open bottles. Uh, okay. Well, we can talk. We're, since we're into Starlight, we'll, we'll go to Starlight. We'll talk about um, getting ready for our first entry proof pick. This is the first pick that you've done for you, right? Yeah. I mean, I've yeah. been on a, I've been on a handful, but you're right. This is the first one I have done for me. Where we have full power. 
Right. Where it's what we what we want, we can pull. Which is, I mean, to me, I'm just I'm giddy. I'm I'm so jacked. Um, right. Yeah, pretty stoked about that. Uh, so yeah, the question is, and I'll just let you kind of keep going. And it's similar to the question that we got from JD. Um, how are you preparing for this? Like what kind of preconceptions or hopes do you have for the picking process? Man, this is, this is very, it's going to be very different. What I say compared to everything else. So like everybody keep that in mind. This is not how I would prepare for a normal pick. This is not any of that. So um, for those who are not super aware uh, Starlight does picks a little bit differently. I feel like they're a little bit different, and Willett's a little bit different. If you listen to the Entry Proof podcast, you probably you should. Heard you should do that. You should definitely go back and listen to the episode that we did with Josh. Uh, he happens to do the single barrel program, or did while it was um, running. It's per presently on a hiatus um, with uh, Willett Distillery. And uh, I, the, I have been on a couple of picks at Willett, uh, tagging along. And for the most part, it seems like you kind of just weave in and out of Rick houses, go up a couple floors, go down a couple floors, maybe back up, back down, out to a different one. Uh, it, it's, it's neat. Not, you know, the, the general experience is go to a room. Maybe there's a tour, a couple of barrels. That's what you get, which in a lot of cases seems like it's a couple of barrels that have been passed over and one new one has shown up, Right is is what what it seems like you hear uh and what you see is what you get that's what you gotta you gotta pick from starlight kind of takes some of the neat things like with with will it but they are nerds and so they they have this background in wine uh, they, they have their family for seven generations or something they they have a background in wine and so they they grew up with that and then they they've done brandy they started dabbling into whiskey and they just tinker because they can because they're on a, a farm that like sustains itself with the apple butter and pumpkin patches and go. hay rides and stuff you won't be able to go on a hay ride i bet but um, there's the marketplace is probably open. You'll get some apple butter. That's good. Yeah, uh, they have a restaurant there, and then they do the card. they do the wine like they do a lot. And I don't want to say the whiskey is just a side thing. I mean, they've been growingly um, popular. I see uh, Kyle messaged in here uh, too, and it was asking uh, they don't distill. Yes, they distill their own stuff. Um, and uh, what's say? No, there are three brother three brothers, right? No, so it's um. Presently, there are two brothers and the dad, um, Ted, Christian, and Blake. Ted is the father, Christian and Blake, the sons. They would be able to tell the story better than I could, but uh, maybe we'll have them on sometime. But anyway, they are, they're super nerdy. And I say that in a positive way, but the thing that's so crazy about Starlight is I feel like if you're going to get Starlight, you want to trust the people or at least know the palates of the people who are bringing you the pick. And I say that because you could probably go there and try some of the products that are on their shelf and know whether you want to buy it. Other than that, they're just like a micro distillery. So they'll do all different types of barrels. And so sure, I'm sure, I'm sure some of them are runs of the same product, all similarly done, same barrels, four grain products, same barrels, three grain products, whatever. But they do a lot of stuff where they're like, oh, this is a Kelvin barrel char two with toasted heads. This is a Kelvin barrel char three with char four heads. This is one has got this char, this head, this char, this head, this, there's this one. It's been, the wood's been air dried two years. This is the wood's been air dried four years. This is an ISC barrel. This is a icon barrel. This is aged. And then they do a bunch of finishings. So they do rye, they do bourbon, a couple of different mash bills of bourbon. Uh, they, they do a lot of different stuff. And so there's been a lot of hype about them lately. And still, I find the juices a little bit on the young side. 
but I have been there a couple of times now, and there's there's some some bangers that they have um, that they they put out. They put out some fun stuff. Yeah, I mean that one I tasted last week um, on the stream, that single barrel pick was really rad. I mean, it got me. I'm so curious. Me pretty amped. I still want to know some specs on that one. Right. I I, I Just forgot to, to into, into it. it. You're fine. But I mean, I, so I will say, so, so all that is prelude, all, all that is just background information to what is the answer to your question. You say, how am I preparing? Well, mm. um, the pick that I did with my previous group, I liked, and there's a lot of things I liked about it. I liked the sweetness about it. I liked that it wasn't super telling of age. Um, this one here that I've been drinking a lot spicier. I'm mm. pretty sure it's still a four grain recipe. But I, uh, our pick was in a Kelvin barrel. This was an ISC barrel. So to me, and those are just so everybody's I, aware. If you're new to bourbon, those are different cooperages. One independent stave company. Correct. The other one, Kelvin Cooperage. Correct. And so, I since they are nerdy, mm -hmm. I'm looking at it trying to say, let's weed out the things that we don't want to try because they'll try a ton of stuff. And it's like which which would be great for you. Well, I gotta get sure an Airbnb anyway. But I also want to make sure we get a good barrel. And so yeah. to me, I'm like, okay, Christian, you know, you're a coffee guy. I'm a coffee guy. So you know my thought process. I'm I'm wanting to say, okay, he, he, we can try a bunch of stuff, but this is what I'm looking for. I want something that carries sweetness. I want it to to mitigate some of the spice that I get. Is that from Independent Stave Company? If so, maybe let's shop Kelvin. Okay, are we still getting too much blank with a toast four? Okay, where are your twos and threes? Okay, there's too much. Gr yeah, I, I'm I'm wondering how nerdy we can get to find. Yeah. Boom! It. So, I I hear you, but what we do so at Stone Creek Coffee, which if, squad, if you don't know, that's my day job. Stone Creek Coffee. Another way you can support the channel or just life in general is you can go buy coffee from StoneCreekCoffee.com, or if you want to support Brian's company, go support Quills Coffee. Um, I assume that's quillscoffee.com. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. Anyway, um, so when we're buying coffee, you know, we try to not bring a lot of preconceptions about, you know, it's a naturally processed geisha carbonic maceration or whatever. Um, we mm. just say, like, let if we know we're working with a good producer, let us taste as many coffees as we can, you know, that are available because the cup will win. So we say that all the time. The cup always wins. Um, and sometimes we'll buy a coffee just because it has a good story. It's really unique process or whatever. But mostly we're just trying to buy a banger coffee. And that's that's my preparation. So I'm going into this with zero to no preconceptions on what we should buy in terms of finishing, barrel, char level, stave company. I want to taste as many as we can. See, and but really I know like, that. <laughs> Dude, but see, that's the thing. I know that. I'm what I'm look I, like a good father. I'm trying to care for you. And I say that because I say Whoa, that because okay. I know and I, well, because I've said this, I, I, and this goes again to your video that you mentioned recently about the dangers of oh, drinking whiskey. Yeah. Kyle just said, I know get you slammered. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that I know from personal experience that uh, tasting at starlight is just shy of being absolutely hammered out of your mind. And and I'm trying to care for you because we also have to make a business decision there, <laughs> which is with, you know, drinking which coffee all day long, you can get, you can get palate fatigue, but at Starlight, you will get drunkity drunk yeah. and you still have to be able to say, what was the barrel that was good when my palate, my palate wasn't blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Well, in coffee, when you're cupping a bunch, 70 to 100 coffees, which I've done, Costa Rica, um, and that was actually one of the worst, worst <laughs> I felt so <laughs> bad that day. I was way over caffeinated because oh, I, I wasn't spitting enough. Like the deal is you slurp and you spit when tasting coffee, unless you want to get jacked, like caffeinated. And so I could bring my coffee tasting spittoon and not swallow. I mean, granted, when I'm drinking whiskey, I tend to want to swallow it. But the other option is don't swallow it all. And then it's like, I hear you. We're probably not, we're not going to taste 40 whiskeys. That's bonkers. No, but yeah. 20 is not out of the question. Well, that's kind of what I would hope for. But I mean, within 20, yeah. we're probably going to taste something that is 
I would hope pretty rad. I get your you're wanting to moneyball the system, which I appreciate. Great movie. If you haven't watched Moneyball, you should watch it. Um but uh at the same time, the the mouth will money, money the ball. <laughs> well, we're in dangerous right. ground here. I, but I guess I guess where I'm at is also <coughs> knowing so so I would say a starlight pick could possibly be as close to a coffee, like coffee cupping in selection than most other things, because sure. it's not like you're trying a Three geisha. Barrels. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm some, some Tipica from Costa Rica and, and uh Jamaica blue mountain. And they're all three different, you know? Uh, well, I guess it is kind of like that, but like there, there's so much, there's so many different things they do that, um, you know, we'll, we will have to try and figure out, okay, I don't know. I mean, there's just so much that you could try. You could try sure. 17 different finishes of rye before we even tasted regular bourbon or finished bourbon. Yeah, well, I mean, I would definitely say that I'm leaning toward bourbon, but I've not tried their rye. So it's like we can do an initial like, all right, let's, let's you try know and get I have a, a family of products. I have a few. I have a few that are marked well yes which is helpful revisit. we did some you did some pre-scouting which is very 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 helpful so i will i will go into this with grace like i said i'm i'm going blank slate you know i'm bringing i bring in a naivete that i think will just contribute to my joy um to be fair i only have three barrels that i think are even available that i would suggest us taste other than that it'll be new to me too so we'll we'll let we'll let the whiskey guide us as you say mr orange headband the cup will win uh the cup so will win. for the members of neat nation who will get to experience this barrel a couple of notes first off uh whatever we purchase we will be very proud of okay so we're not going to get something that we're not proud of so um my hope would be that you can bank on that i mean we're both pretty picky tasters you guys have seen me taste some craft whiskeys you know that if it's bad i'm telling you it's bad um secondly is the the retailer for this will be sealbox so sealbox.com right. i think yeah uh so the the instagram handle drink sealbox s-e-e-l-b-a-c-h-s um so that's brian uh from no blake blake sorry 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 blake, blake from bourboner that's his spirits retail shop he he specializes in craft spirits and he'll help us bring our barrel picks to the market that said there are some regulations on the states that these are available like that he can ship to like for instance he can't ship to wisconsin which sucks but um there are enough people who will help you get it that's just what i can say <laughs> is right. that you may not be able to get it shipped to your state but you can get it shipped to a state and get somebody to help you get one so over time i know blake's working to extend his distribution um he used to be able to ship to wisconsin now he can't but mash and grape can so he'll figure it out put some pressure on him kyle ramage says hand delivery yes that's correct <laughs> the call <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions y'all have? Oh, is there an idea of price? Uh, Starlight stuff is really reasonable. Um, Brian, what's a? I mean, you you purchased. What what are we talking about for price? Yeah, here? I mean, as a as a, I mean, a safe bet, I would say maybe like fifty, fifty five. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Yeah, very new riffy. Could be the, could be new. less. I don't know. I just depends really on what we grab. I don't, you know, based on my past experiences. So I would say somewhere around that ballpark. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, and I would say to you all too, obviously, um, uh, working with Blake uh, means that there's Drew and I are not making money off of this barrel pick. Zero we're, we're wanting we are wanting to 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 pick barrels, be a, a fun experience for us. We want to do something that's able to bring something to nation. We can all be communing with potentially the same product. Okay. So mm. um, 
the yeah, only we way right do now that we're getting – when, yeah. when we get these, we should say, like, all right, everybody's got three weeks, and then we're going to do a live tasting of the barrel pick. Yeah, that's got to happen. Yeah. Now, so so all that preface is just meaning, like, you know, to, for us, being able to offer you all picks and us throwing it in the Patreon, that's how it will help us. That's what will help us continue to bring content, continue to try and guide you all through the ins and the outs of whiskey, whatever it might be. That'll pay for our, our headbands. Um, all that. Yeah, so Chris had asked, looks like twice now, he was asking if uh, patrons get an early crack at the bottle. Absolutely. Yep. First priority, yeah. So if yep. patron, what will happen is we'll throw the code out to our patrons and it'll start at the top tiers. Of course, we don't have enough patrons right now where there's going to be, like unless somebody wants to buy like 50 of them, <laughs> we're not going to have any problem getting all of our patrons um, some some bottles. So patrons will always have first crack, uh, and then we'll open it up to the live stream. Like we'll do a live stream where we drop the code to buy. Um, but in the future, as our patrons grow and the channel and the podcast continue to grow, then the barrel picks will be limited to the patrons. Now, an interesting thing though that I will say. So Tom had asked how many bottles, two hundred plus or minus. Okay, so depends I think on it the depends barrel on size. The I think it depends on the barrel size and the product. So the last bourbon that I got, I think it did have somewhere over 200 bottles, but the rye that we did was not near that much. And at the same time, it's possible if there is a, like a real, real banger of a barrel, it's possible that we can only purchase half of the barrel, or it's possible that we only do purchase half of the barrel. Um, we also might have some folks who are going with us, just a private friend of mine and his like financial company that are considering snagging some bottles for them, just like give to their corporate people. If they were to split some of this barrel too with us, uh, which is still undecided if they're going to go, if that's going to be a thing, it would also limit the amount of bottles that exist. So I uh, cannot tell you yet around how many bottles it, uh, I will say there is a barrel. I want to keep an open mind, but there's a barrel that I am considering that is being sold in thirds. Uh, yeah. If the, if we, if it gets down to the thirds, it's possible we'll only get about 60 bottles. So that would have to be an absolute just, banger though. Like, which I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, it's, Although we never, yeah, we didn't even discuss, and I'm just throwing this out here, but there's, what if we took two? <laughs> like, if we did that yeah, one, no, that's, that third, we could always yeah, get I another was, one, too. I was definitely going to go there. I mean, so also the thing is that, you know, I have talked with Blake about this, too, and he did just pick a couple of barrels, but he knows that Starlight's doing some really cool stuff, and a lot of, um, like, the Bourboner community and Sealbox community mm -hmm. would be interested anyway. So he's kind of like, do whatever you can get from them, just take it. So if there were two that we wanted to do, we might end up with two. I don't know. I mean, we might end up with a couple. We might end up with 45, but I doubt that. Kyle says black and white will buy some. That's great. Dope. That's great. Yeah, again, that's, and that's the, thing. the so more I will you buy, say, it doesn't say, necessarily help us, but it does help us pick more barrels in the future. Like if well, Nation does help us can be counted on to buy barrels, then 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 the Entry Proof Squad can bring as many barrels as we can get our hands on. Yeah, it does mean that Blake will be more likely to continue to help us bring barrels in because he knows that we could sell them. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's, that's always yeah. good for a retailer to know that you can sell it. Um, yes. So I will say too, um, I, I will say the the last bottle that uh, the bottle that I did with my previous group, my wife and I really enjoy it. My wife specifically does. We've been through about six or seven bottles of it so far. So whatever we wow. do pick, it is still possible that. <laughs> You know, I'm still hanging on to two cases of it, so yeah, I don't know how many of these bottles are going out to make sure. down. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get some enough to share with my brothers. I got my dad and two brothers, and then enough for me. And this is my first pick, so this is legendary squad. Like, if you've we'll been probably have to hang a couple of back just for the archival sake of like yeah, any exactly, years thing. You exactly get one right. of every pick that we've done. You know, yeah, got some, I mean. Oh, yeah, so I mean, this is this is a big deal. Like I mean, the channel and the podcast are going places. Y'all know this. <laughs> I'm mean, not to get too far ahead of ourselves or anything. You could tell from the headbands we're going places. Yeah, right. Obviously, we're doing cool stuff. <laughs> I saw. Well, I, I can finally take it off. It's not terrible. 
I saw a fun post earlier that was uh, like you, it's sort of disingenuous to toot your own horn. And I saw a post um, uh, uh, on Instagram of somebody doing something and they were tooting their horn hard, their own horn, <laughs> their own horn. Oh, no. <laughs> really, yeah. Well, I mean, it was fine. You know, like you gotta, if you're not gonna promote yourself, who's gonna promote you? So, like, that's right. that's fine. That's fair. So, can't give too much flack. Yeah, so I had to. Take I hope to get a haircut off. before you come to town, dude. I don't know. Like, like I kind of nice like haircut. I've got it everywhere. Yeah, I think it All looks of- good. I mean, it's a little, not- it's a little tussled, but it's kind of this the wild only man vibe that I like. During COVID, has been my wife, so I need to have her do it again. I've only yeah. done, only done COVID home, home hair, home haircuts. I'm proud of my barber shop because they do a really good job. Like the, their safety precautions are really top notch. So big fans of what they're doing over there. Uh, it's like the it's like the bars that are doing drinks to go. They just give you clippers and scissors and a mirror and a baggie <laughs> with instructions about cutting your own hair. <laughs> Twenty five dollar haircut pack. Uh, we had a question a while back. Uh, so first, uh, Chris, thanks for that super chat you dropped. We appreciate that. Um, and there was a question that was asked. I who put it where. I was asking if we would document the pick process. So here's the thing. I wish we had a videographer to come with us and do this. I would love to make super dank, high quality videos about our adventures in whiskey. Um, And uh, we may get there. Um, But for now, we don't have that. Brian is an amazing photographer, so we'll be able to snap some shots. And I will do my darndest to capture more on Instagram Live than I did when we were down in uh, Bardstown and in Kentucky. Um, you know, I did a decent amount, and then we recorded four podcast episodes. It's not like we weren't busy. <laughs> but, but uh, um, yeah, so we'll see. I mean, if anybody is... Uh, a videographer, like you've got some legitimate um, film experience and you want to come on a barrel pick, hit us up. Send us a DM. I could do video instead of photos if you're super interested in that. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, well, I'm interested in that. I think Nation's interested in seeing sort of what it's like, you know, but at the same time, you got to taste the whiskey, which makes it difficult. That's all good. I got a gimbal. I'll just take the camera on the gimbal. gimbal. I'll... Uh, yeah, we can trade. We can trade because I, you know, I also do a decent amount of stuff related to media. So maybe we can trade and just make it happen that way. Yeah, it just again, it just yeah. depends on if that's one or you want some photos. I, I always like both. The photos. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the photos are nice for the grams. You know, get it for the gram. Eric Sawyer says he can hold the camera. Well, I mean, that counts for something. Eric's hmm. a good guy too. He's a good guy, Eric. Liberty not license. Make it so make it so number one. Classic Jean-Luc Picard reference. Such a good show. Star Trek the Next Generation. We should do an episode entirely about Star Trek the Next Generation. Oh, are, you, gosh, are you a no Trekkie? Way. No. No, I'm not a Trekkie. You're dead to me. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm not much of a Trekkie beyond the next generation, actually. I watched a decent amount of Deep Space Nine. Didn't watch any Voyager. Like five episodes of Enterprise. Uh, yeah, I watched the, the movies of the original Star Trek, but not much of that. Show. Like that was, it's just campy. Like the old, old Star Trek, or yeah, Star Trek is just super campy. Yeah, I don't know why it just, it just never gripped me. Yeah, you know, I've, I've contemplated trying to do it, but um, now I kind of dabbled in Star Wars, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, Star Wars is good. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm not putting Star Trek above Star Wars. Well, I put. It's like, you know, some Star Trek sucks. Some Star Wars sucks. Although outside of the three prequels, episodes one and two, and three was bad, but could have been great. Like there were parts of three that were great and parts of three that were bad. But one and two were just a steaming pile of dump. The rest of mm-hmm. Star Wars is really good. I even like the newest stuff. Like I know some people are hit or miss on the newest stuff. I really liked it. Um, Especially the the one offs, the solo movie and Rogue One. Mm-hmm. I thought those were wonderful, super fun. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's a little nice little detour. But yeah, so Star Trek, the original I mentioned, Campy, 
Uh, Enterprise sucked. I didn't watch their newest series. But Next Generation started really campy. It was like a continuation of the original Star Trek. But then season three, it got so good. They went through a uniform change. They got rid of like the tight jumpsuits that were just awkward on old people. And then uh, they got to the end of season three, and that was the Borg cliffhanger. So like the, the end of season three... Jean-Luc Picard gets assimilated by the Borg and uh, he becomes their sort of spokesperson. Uh, the crew on the Enterprise, just hang with me. The crew on the Enterprise doesn't know what's happening. And then, uh, the, they, they get a, what do they call it? I'm forgetting right now, but they get the video communication from the Borg and then Picard turns around and he's all Borged up. And um, the Enterprise has been working on a special weapon to try and take out this Borg ship because uh, they've adapted against the use of phasers and torpedoes. And so then um, Riker, he's like, okay. <laughs> he sees Picard on the ship assimilated by the Borg. And he says, Mr. Worf, fire. And then it cuts. And that's the cliffhanger. And, you know, there's no binging. You've got to wait like six months for the next episode. But man, I mean that'll give you goosebumps. Like that'll get you jacked. Still gets me jacked. I'm jacked right now. thinking about it. Can I, can I unmute you now? You're dead. To me. I'm joking. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Anybody do who you, was uh, alive you... for that, which I wasn't, I actually like the first time I watched that, I could just watch the next episode. Cause I was like nine years old watching it on uh, spike TV. Um, but my dad um, was much older talked about the epicness of the cliffhanger which i appreciate i understand i didn't actually live through it to be fair do you um watch doctor who no i tried um but i don't know where to start that's the problem with doctor who <laughs> it's like where yeah you I just start? you just start anywhere <laughs> uh yeah no I, I have not gotten into the who I mean, I appreciate sci-fi. It's not what I go to every day. Um, Star Trek and Star Wars are very nostalgic because I watched them with my dad and my brothers when I was a kid. But I, I haven't, like, Battlestar Galactica, I didn't get into that. There's really been no sci-fi that I got into. Very little fantasy. You know, I, Lord of the Rings, I liked. Of course, I read the books. The only books I ever read, actually. Besides Harry Potter. All right, we're off the the only book the that's radar. it. You've only read Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter your whole life. <laughs> to be fair, I have a master's degree, but so I I read <laughs> plenty, but I'm I'm just not a big reader. Um, anyway, all right, next topic: uh, bourbon <laughs> hunting. <laughs> I'm sure we'll devolve again. We got time, but I want to make sure we get through the agenda because people joined us expecting an agenda. Lord knows what they think of the content right now. Um, Last Starfighter was a classic movie from 1984. I've never heard of that, JD, but thanks for the tip, dog. Uh, okay. Bourbon hunting in Louisville. This podcast dropped yesterday, so we got some feedback. Said, hey, if you guys are going to drop a podcast, do it before the live stream if you're going to talk about it on the live stream. I'm like, hey, that's actually good feedback. Thank you. Uh, I'm pretty sure Tom told us that. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. We should have thought of that. So this one dropped yesterday and the theme of this most recent episode was uh what's it like bourbon hunting in louisville so i talked a little bit about my experience brian talked a little bit about his experience but in general just to recap it's not as easy as you might think <laughs> like mm -hmm. there's definitely some some definite challenges in that um it's fairly picked over you know like uh it's uh it's fertile ground but the ground has been exhausted it's in need of a sabbath year the sabbath rest to invigorate the soil again um but unfortunately there there the the bourbon scene in louisville is so far beyond <laughs> the bourbon scene anywhere else like nobody well there's very few people there that are not very well educated about bourbon and looking for it so it's like you have have developed some really solid connections so you're aware of what's getting dropped uh when um sort of after it happens but you got to be so fast like and we talked about mm -hmm. this on the podcast there were a few examples of like oh this is dropping but you got to get there in the next five minutes or you're not going to get it right yeah what do you have to add? put a little 
We have. I, I don't know if you uh, if you did anything with it yet, but uh, we'll have another little exclusive little drop of um, mm. of something that popped up while we were recording. Yeah, I'll put uh, it so up. That was fun. I'll put that clip up uh, tomorrow on Patreon. That's Patreon exclusive clip. So sometimes we'll we'll drop some extra extra stuff from the podcast on Patreon. So yeah, <laughs> we're recording the podcast and Brian goes, Oh, here's a thing. And so then we spent 15 minutes trying to decide if we're going to go try and get this. That's thing. right. That's right. That's right. But yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely interesting. You know, it's one of those places where, um, you know, a lot of places don't get things. And I don't know if that, I don't know if you still have like hopes and aspirations that maybe you will, Maybe you just look for all other ways of getting it. Ovals is just you have to deal with a lot of missing, frustration, loss, like not being the right place at the right time. Going into a store saying, do you have blank, 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 being told no, to find out five minutes after you left, they did. You know, <laughs> it is, that is Louisville. That's Louisville. Yeah, I mean, um, it makes sense. Like, if you're a store owner, you, you walk in a liquor store, you're asking if they have blends. Everyone knows the, the 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 hip whiskey names, right? Because that's what everyone comes in looking for all the time. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I did that video, which is also, like, it corresponded to the bourbon hunting in Louisville podcast that was what did i get on my trip again that was super lo-fi i'm sorry about that squad um but you all watched it <laughs> like literally everybody watched it that video did pretty well <laughs> um so i might do another one well <laughs> i'm not gonna have time to shop actually when we do this pick bottom line is Let's though see. like my agenda when i was shopping down there was listen i know there's stuff that sits on the shelves here that i can't get in wisconsin for instance that what i took the picture of uh, for the podcast teaser was the the Knob Creek 12 year cask, which you're like, oh yeah, you know that's been around. I was like, whatever, and I'm like, what do you mean whatever? Like in Wisconsin, this is gold. Like we don't get this here. Like the Knob Creek 12 hundred proof. Um, I was really fortunate to get that. So now I've got to probably do a side by side of these guys. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I was thrilled out of my mind to get this at a very, you know, like below MSRP at a grocery store. Um, so that's sort of the wonder of Kentucky, whereas, you know, the super allocated stuff is going to be as hard as anywhere else to get. You know, I lucked into an EH Taylor um, small batch, um, lucked into that. Uh, and then I, you know, I paid over MSRP for Blanton's for charity. Those were the only two. Yeah. Well, that and then the you helped me get the Minkter's Barrel Strength Rye, but that I didn't get myself. You you helped me get it. So to be fair, right? But I did share that tip, and that's also on the podcast. Is the tip on how to sometimes snag an allocated thing if you know where to look. And that, yeah, uh, and then again, feature on too the previous uh, uh, little blurb that we put up there too was. Just while we were talking to Josh, but we asked him that question before we even recorded the podcast. Just like you know, what uh, what kind of tips he has if you're if you're coming to Louisville or whatever. I thought he had some uh, some interesting. Uh, di he had, he had one specific bit of information that's a little bit different and not even something that we really talked about on our episode. So you know, uh, people can go check that out if they're on the Patreon. Are you referring to uh, poor hunting? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't tend to think in in that context, but it's helpful sometimes. Like you don't need a whole bottle. Yep. We didn't. I don't think we spent enough time talking about that because that's an interesting topic. Like mm -mm, sometimes we're like trying to get these bottles, and we may not even like them. Like it may not be our jam. <laughs> we spend all this time working for allocated bottles, and then we're like, actually, that's not my profile. Where it may be helpful to say, like, listen, maybe buy less, buy what you know you love, and then you know, just like go to bars and try and find bars that have really, really solid selections and reasonable prices. So you can try some pretty rad pours at, at bars. Like that's <clears throat> not a bad, uh, not a bad approach. Absolutely. Uh, our boy Specifically Matt. at a place like, um, you know, at bar at uh Willet where they have <sighs> tons of single barrels you'll never get or at Barstown bourbon company where they have tons of, any bottle that you yeah. never get. <laughs> oh man. 
Uh, that room made me feel things that I've never felt before. That that oh, room at Bardstown. I could go back there and just yeah, sit and genuflect. It's amazing. Uh, Matt, cheers if you're still yeah. on the channel. What's up, she man? Showed up, hanging out. Eric, Showed I don't know if here. Eric McFarland's been here the whole time, but he's he's chatting a little bit too. Eric, what's up? A lot of fires. Somebody caught fire. <laughs> That's right. I'm not sure what happened there. <laughs> uh, all right. Anything else from the most recent pod that we should tease? This is a shorter oh, one. Man. I would say that it's pretty easy to digest. Um, we've got one yeah. other episode that we actually recorded live here. That's the next episode that'll go live on Thursday. So it's the right. Drew P drinks uh, Dusty's for the first time. So we're going to have a meeting this week, outline our next round of content. We've got two guests that said they'll come on. We just got to get it scheduled because they'll be good episodes. Yep. They'll be really rad. And one, we'll of which, one of which I believe records on Thursdays or at least was recording tonight, which mm. is why he could not be on the show with us tonight. We were going. Yeah, we're, we're trying to do it live if we can. We can do it, <clears throat> Brian. We can do it live on a different night. Um, and just change that week up a little bit. I think Nation. Oh my would gosh! I just thought about this. What if? What if we? What if we had Matt on the podcast? No, I was thinking about that earlier today. We definitely have to do that specifically to talk I mean, about being the world's I mean, best whiskey that. taster. But that doesn't mean that Matt would say that. Matt's big time now. He's the world's best whiskey taster. The best one. <laughs> I don't even know. I, how much I thought that was a little bit the world's best whiskey taster on a podcast. <laughs> Well, I hope not very much, but I, 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 I thought it was funny that Bardstown called that event the world's best whiskey taster because <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> that's just kind of that's a bit of a stretch. But no doubt that that was a hard contest to win. So I don't mean to diminish at all what Matt Matt's Matt's taking home of the belt. Like that's pretty awesome, Brian. And I, I remember were if I talked about, about competing this next year. So. I don't think I don't remember if I talked about this live or not. Maybe I did. So if so I apologize for repeating. But I remember um, I had a submission video that I turned in late, uh, which FYI squad does no good when there's a deadline and you submit after it. But still, I remember checking through some other people who were like tagging their their video submissions. And I came across Matt's and I said, you know what? It'd be down to me and him in the final. I could tell. He's he's got that je ne sais quoi mm. about him. And look, he did it. Nailed it. So yeah, and cool. then you didn't even submit. You're so sure of yourself and you didn't submit. Eric is um so I did submit. I just submitted after the deadline, which does no good. But um yeah, Eric uh, asked what upcoming bottle releases are you guys most looking forward to that's a great question and uh so here, yeah we'll get to that for sure here's another thing i had a show idea for the droopy whiskey show excuse me i'll go live on instagram um probably tomorrow talk about this more but i'd like you to think about it squad and if you've got good questions let me know but the the concept is from across the bar and so it's it's really a, a question Q and A, and it, it's not necessarily about me, but really about whiskey. Like, what are the questions that you have about whiskey in general? I enjoy the research and the learning. So if you have them from across the bar, hit me with them, and I'll put them together in a video. I'd like to do that and test how how that video was received. So if you have questions, just please slide over to Instagram and into my DMs at Drew P Whiskey and hit me with your question ideas from across the bar all right now let's get to that question releases we're most looking forward to brian what's on your list oh geez you jumped to me first uh it gives me time <laughs> yeah you know, hmm. um i'm trying to remember what has been what has been teased recently about upcoming and i don't I don't know. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do with that. Um, so squad, if you're ever wondering like what's scheduled to come out. So I'm going to plug breaking bourbon.com, the very top menu. They have a release calendar that they just keep track of what is supposed to drop. They do it month by month or if it's rumored, they'll kind of put it at the bottom if they don't know when, <laughs> when it's going to come out. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, so just looking at January, there's the Thomas Moores that dropped. I passed on those. I wasn't really interested in 1792 Barton stuff unless I heard it was good. So I have not tried it. Uh, Ezra there Brooks 99 dropped, which I did not try that either. Passed on that today. Um, and then Booker's uh, 2021 batch one dropped in certain places. It's not in Milwaukee yet. Um, what were you saying, Brian? There's there's two things I'm intrigued by. I remember seeing that there's there's talk of possibly doing another version of Booker's Rye. Oh yes, I, I heard be, that too. Yeah, I'd be curious <laughs> yeah. About that. And then I, I'm I'm moderately curious about this, but I'm I'm not ex necessarily expecting good things. Did you see that um, OKI, like the the, yeah. the other OKI they're doing? Yeah, I'm with um, you. I'm very skeptical, not super jacked. Yeah, I'm skeptical only because as I've been drinking MGP products, like I do kind of like the 12 year, but I do know it picks up a lot more age. So to have something that's aged longer than that, it just makes me like, is it going to be good? Yeah, I just don't have so, a lot of faith when a really highly touted brand moves to other hands. Like if they do a great job, great, you know. Um, but I know it's not going to get released in Wisconsin. So that's the tough part is like any of these whiskeys I'm I'm jacked for. But like the, the limited releases are so hard to get here that I'm just like, I, I can't get my hopes up. Uh, Tom says Ezra Brooks 99 was solid. Well, that's good. Good to know for sure. Uh, JD says in demand whiskeys are not always worth the hype. And now I focus on micro distillers that seem to do the job for my palate. Hear you, man. No doubt. No doubt. And JD's He's got fine. a great point too. And again, that's um, that's uh, something I thought about uh, bringing up earlier on the episode. Uh, in general, is just you know, as you were talking about a uh, barrel tasting, it's like you know, if 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 we tasted more stuff blind, if we were given more stuff blind, if we were given more stuff that was not in a bottle, would we enjoy it? You know, yeah. that's what I am curious about. Really, that's that's the that is the that's the goal, right? Is that we drink enjoyable whiskey. Yeah. And I wish I do wish there was a little bit more of a way to do that more. Yeah. To, well, we to can, find the yeah. you know to continuously have just great enjoyable whiskeys without. In the in the problem is, you know, I have learned I like Elijah Craig picks. Proof is fine. They're accessible price point, but I still don't really like buffalo trace and the so like it's not like i can grab buffalo trace picks when they come out or grab grab eagle rares when they come out like it's not it's just not going to do it for me so sometimes even the shelfer stuff you know i i just i don't know what's there what's there that's not young what's there that's um that scratches all the boxes but <laughs> that isn't that isn't allocated what did I sure. say? Wrong? Scratch yeah. all the boxes. He's just scratching. Yeah, checking all the boxes. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, unless you're playing the lottery, you're playing scratchy lottery. Or I'm in a prison, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. And you're scratching it on the wall. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing we can all relate to, no doubt. Uh, Kyle oh. says blind tastings are clutch. I agree. So here's the thing we can do is that when we have, I mean, you have way more open allocated stuff than I do. But it's like when we do that, we can send a blind, uh, a mix of super allocated and non-super allocated and just see what you like. And it's not really a judgment of can you call what's what, <laughs> but how good is this stuff? You know, like what do you yeah. rate and it? I don't want to, and there are two things. I mean, there are a lot of times where I have put allocated stuff against not. And there are times where it has lost. And that's cool. That's one thing. But there are a lot more times, I would say, I clearly can tell something that is touted as harder to find, more expensive, more allocated. In a lot of cases, it does still win on flavor. The, the thing is, it's how different is that step down? You know, if it's if it's clearly the winner, okay, that's fine. But is it worth the trouble you'd go through? Is it worth the money you'd have to spend? First, and I think about that a lot when it comes to, for me, Doc Swinson's, Luxro Double Barrel, Whiskey Drummer, 
BBC it is Discovery. Easy, easier to acquire these bottles. It, and so, it's and it's ninety percent there. Sure, ten percent still not. It, you can tell there's a quality difference. And, and, and well, then, whiskey, then you just so wrestle that with yourself. Here's the thing about the double. So Lux Row double barrel. You can't get outside the distillery. So I can't get it at all. It's not an option. But I could get it for you, bro. <laughs> well, you right, come okay. in so, next yeah, week. Th things are changing. But so like this is this is a show for the every man, you know, the the people who are like me and live in Wisconsin. So like, yes, it's helpful to have some connections to grab some stuff. But even like whiskey drummer, you know, I looked at that. I was I was at uh, liquor barn and I stared at it, and it was what two thirty. I think was the cheapest I saw it for. So that's two hundred and thirty dollars for fifteen year old bourbon. I'm like, I would drink a two hundred and thirty dollar bourbon when? Like, I just don't. There's not that many special occasions I have. Like most of the allocated stuff I have, I got at a very reasonable price, or I traded for. And the one I actually did pay the most for out of pocket uh, is that Four Roses 2020 because I paid over MSRP for that when I saw it on the shelf. But I'm going to open it here in a few weeks when Adelaide, the baby number three, little girl, is born. Um, and so, like, that's the special occasion bourbon. You know, I just can't imagine, <laughs> like, dropping 230 to pop that sucker on the regular, like, even though it may be the profile that I most prefer. And I have that as a, hold on, let's see, Josh says, I tried the Luxro 12 double barrel at a bar in Kentucky. Amazing, wish I could find it, not in NC. I'm not, I'm not kidding. It's, again, if I were to compare it to other stuff, I feel like it, it will lose. But it is in such a great spot. Like the, the flavor profile, the proof, everything about it's great. Uh, I need to pick up more of it. So that's. And the that's price was pretty reasonable on that one too, right? It was like a hundred bucks. No, dude, it's close to 200. I think. Oh, is it? Ouch. Yeah, I don't, not but I don't know. Nice. I've only seen it at stores locally. I've not seen it at the distillery. Maybe it's oh, cheaper there. I, yeah, I thought it was a distillery release. Distillery. That, well, you know how those things work. They have to have distillery. it in some stores. So I've seen it at the Kroger's and stuff too. Uh, so, like the William Heaven Hills? Do the William Heaven Hills get released in stores from Heaven Hill? I've seen them couple a a tiny couple a suggestion okay your internet's not yeah, crushing just it tonight. suggestion you're a little laggy what eric mcfarland says uh it's now 180 at the distillery man kyle says above 60 diminishing returns till like 130 <laughs> well i think when it gets above 130 the there's still diminishing returns <laughs> like it, it's just hard to well above that. and that's that's an episode for a podcast i have in a note i need to bring back up i talked to you about it is weighing quality whiskey you know how do you like how, how you worth find it is it either how worth it is it or like what are the things and this is preferential what are the things for you that check as many boxes and what boxes are left unchecked and okay. same, same with me. I mean, we could we could talk a little bit about that tonight, but I think it would be a good episode because, you know, value is is very heavily influenced in whiskey compared to other stuff. When it comes, you know, price that you pay to what you get. Um, I didn't think about it as much before. I think about it more now, but at the same time, it is hard for me to say that there are many bottles under $30 that I would say, oh yeah, they crush it. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, like there's, there's a place for a budget bourbon, but uh, yeah, it's not really on my bar. <laughs> there's a place for it. So like I have, you know, I, I keep a budget or two around, you know, like in terms of $30 bottles, Eagle Rare, Henry McKenna, which are now over $30. Um, those I have, the old school Elijah Craig, but everything else on my bar is that I enjoy at, at, at a lot, at a at a lot, <laughs> at a high level is is more than thirty, sometimes quite a bit more. So that's fair. Um, 
not to diminish that some bourbon is really, really good. And if I was just stuck with, you know, $20 bourbon the rest of my life, I could probably still be a very happy man. Um, Josh Embry says early times. Yeah. I mean, it's good, but it's, it doesn't really check all my boxes. Like, that's a question is like, does it, does it, does it cause you to mouthgasm? And I don't want to be overly crass, but does it like really float your boat? Um, early times does not really float my boat. It is a solid bourbon. Turkey 101, same story. Doesn't float my boat, but it's a solid bourbon. So like if I'm at the campfire, you know, drinking a bourbon, it's great. Like early times. But like, you know, a really great batch of Elijah Craig Braille Proof, I'm like, yeah, let's go. Or some of the Four Roses limited editions I've had. Definitely. Um, that Discovery Batch 4, when I tasted that, I was ecstatic. I was like, this is so good. You know, it's like those. Like, what do you have to do to get the bourbon that just blows your mind? I think that's... Or like you're talking good. barrel. Like, I would say barrel is relatively accessible for some of their... Some of the bottles to be, I would assume, like, way above the others. Yeah. So like we had a question. Sorry, go ahead. Barrel nine was from. No. Uh, uh, no. Uh, Eric asked about Blue Run. Thoughts on Blue Run at 160. I passed on it when I was in Kentucky. I've heard great things. But again, like how much money are we going to spend on bourbon? Like I spent a lot of money when I was down there, but I didn't buy any. Well, I take it back. I spent uh, over just just over 160 on the Wild Turkey Revival. Um, that was the most I spent on a bottle while I was down there. And now I haven't spent any money on bourbon outside of those Eagle rear picks uh, a week and a half ago <laughs> because I need to not spend any money on bourbon for a while. Like that's the nature of it, you know, um, is that we don't have an infinite amount of money at our disposal to buy everything we want or the exact quality of bourbon that we want. So Blue Run, while I heard was great, I was like, I just... <laughs> I just can't like, I'm sure it's great because I've, you know, every piece of feedback I've heard is that it's really good and it comes in a lovely bottle. Branding's pretty awesome. Story's pretty cool, but I'm just not going to buy it. Just can't have everything. Eric McFarland had messaged be, uh, previously and had asked if I had tried the Evan Williams 12 year. Is it worth 129? I have not tried it. I have wanted to try it. That's the red label. The, one. I yeah. Red know. label. Yeah. So, so I heard I that was distillery. Yeah, it's distillery release or Evan Williams uh, experience release. And then I, I heard that was also, it was initially a Japanese release, correct? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, my, I, and I will say, I mean, I, I sound contradictory about this because for a long time, I did not like the products that came out of Heaven Hill on a regular basis. They were too hot, too dry, and too nutty for me. Mm -hmm. And so I swore off. Why did my channel stop? I don't know. I can still hear you, but you're definitely frozen. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refresh this camera real quick and see if I can't fix it. Do you want to pop me out for just a second and come back in? Sure, but or I really like the way that it froze. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, if you turn I mean, if off. You, if you just stay. No, we'll stay. We'll stay here and we'll see what goes on. So, um, I, let's see if it comes back and I can go back to the same spot. Can I come back? Can I come back oh, in the man. same place? I wish. So can you, you hear me in the, the audio still? Yeah, you're fine. Um, so you weren't like in heaven Hill. That's where we left off. Yeah. It's still, what does it say? Restart your browser. This continues. You stop that. You stop Get that out of here. All right. Why don't you drop oh, off? Where to go? Back. Where'd it go? All right. I'm going to cut you off. You figure it out. No, you come back to me. Bye. <laughs> uh, so I personally like Heaven Hill. But uh, good question so was, so your money zone is 50 to 150? That feels uh, a little bit absurd. This is a good question is, what is the money zone? Uh, definitely not above 100. I, I, it pains me to spend over 100. Like, I bought the Revival because it was a really special release from Wild Turkey. Um, you know, and just looking at my bar, you know, my money zone is probably the $40 range, which is where I would get McKenna or Eagle Rare now. Rare Breed Squad. I mean, Rare Breed is, is really good. And Kentucky Spirit, both from Wild Turkey, I dig pretty hard. 
Um, those are some really good, really good bottles that are going to cost you 40 to 50. Um, Old Forester 1920, really killer in the 60 range. Uh, I even like Old Forester Statesman. Nice, nice. Old Forester Statesman, you know, in between 50 and 60 as well. So, yeah, I'm going to say my money zone is going to be from uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof uh, between 60 and 70. So my money zone is going to be from 40 to 70. I think that's where the best values in bourbon lie. A lot of the barrel picks are going to live in that range as well. Um, but you can get some really solid, like Elijah Craig Barrel Picks, really, really good picks for 30. And that's like, oh, yeah, let's go. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not telling everybody they got to go spend, you know, a hundred, hundred dollars, $150. That said, some of the best whiskeys I've ever had are expensive as crap. Like so expensive. Booker's Rye was phenomenal. Unbelievable. Discovery series batch four from Bardstown. Really amazing. 130 bucks. Uh, the four roses limited editions. You know, if you get it at MSRP, 150 bucks, but amazing. But that said, I've had four roses, single barrel, barrel strength picks that were also amazing for, you know, 70, $70. So it's like, you can get fortunate and find a killer batch of rare breed, a killer four roses pick, uh, really awesome. Elijah Craig barrel, uh, barrel proof batch, you know, all for less than 70 bucks or around that $70 range. That said, some of the more dependable bangers cost more. That said, a lot of crappy whiskey also costs more than 100 bucks. So yeah. there's no like absolute rule you can apply here related to price. It just doesn't exist. Right. Okay, uh, that's my it, my it, horse. Answering that question, though, I have not tried it. I have wanted to. Uh, with the blue run, that we've... Do we confirm it's the same kind of juice that like was in discovery four that is in the, the doc Swinson stuff. It's that same, like kind of juice. Like sourced older Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. That probably went overseas for a while and then came back. Yeah. I would look, I would have to look at the line of its proof to know if it's worth it's it. I have enjoyed. Mm, it's kind of low, but I do like that stuff. It's just a hard pill to swallow, cost wise. Dude, I, I say don't that know because one. I don't think this is barrel. I don't think this is barrel proof. This blue run. It's oh. 113 proof, but it's not barrel proof. That doesn't sound like a winner to me. Then <laughs> get out of here. I can't. I don't have. I don't have time for people who are only barrel proofs. Like I've, <laughs> I've talked some on my channel. Like my money zone for proof, which I do have a money zone for proof, is like one hundred to one twenty. Like when it gets harder, I'm not a barrel proof that. guy. I'm not a barrel proof well, guy. I'm saying I don't want to spend because I don't want to spend one hundred and sixty dollars on an undisclosed source whiskey that has been watered down. Woo! Like. <laughs> No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying Doc Swinson is, I mean, Old Soul, Old Soul, I'm pretty sure is watered down, Old Soul 15, and it was pretty good, which is also mm. cheaper than Blue than uh, Blue Run or whatever it's yeah. called. Um, I don't mind if it's been I think it's like, if it's amazing. Like, if it's, if it's watered down and it's phenomenal, then I really don't care if it was watered down. But I haven't tried Blue Run, so I really can't say. Yeah, I bet it's not. But anyway, um... The uh, the old soul 15 is like 102 proof, it is touched down, and to be fair, so is the Lux Road double barrel that I was talking so highly about that is more than 160. So, stop. Um, but yeah, I've not tried Blue Run, but uh, there are other things I feel like I would lean towards. Now, what's tricky about that juice that's on the market is that I have tried Docs six, seven, eight, and nine. And one of them tastes like a mix between Heaven Hill and Beam a little bit to me. One tastes straight up like Jim Beam. Mm. The other one tastes nutty, but not maybe a little bit more in a in a Booker's limited sort of way. And then the other one just almost tastes more like a, a stag. Like it's just a little bit more sugary, a little bit more like uh, sweet. And so the one that tastes the most like Jim Beam straight up or like a Knob Creek pick, that is dismissible. 
So to me, if Blue Run tasted like that, I'd be disappointed to spend that much when I could have just gotten 120 proof Knob Creek pick for fifty dollars. Um, so I'm a, probably super behind on the chat. Let me see. It's fine. I got a question for you as you look at the chat. Here's yep. a really interesting question: Is so Blue Run? That's Rutledge. It's Jim Rutledge who partnered with the former Nike designer to develop this Blue Run brand. Blue Run is forty dollars more than a release of Cream of Kentucky. At 12 most recent releases, I passed on these when I was in Kentucky too. Maybe it's actually more than that. Cream of Kentucky may be pushing 150, um, but 12.3 to 13 years old. So which should you get? Like, I mean, the blue run seems to cost a little bit more because the partnership required a little bit more money because not only are you paying for Rutledge, but now you got to pay for the Nike designer, um, which uh, granted is a beautiful bottle. Like the brand is cool, but it's like... I mean, so if, if if Drew and Brian went to market and we just bought some old barrels and we said, hey, guys, it's the entry proof brand. It's Drew and not Drew. <laughs> and here's some pretty rad 13 year old sourced Kentucky whiskey that, you know, they sent overseas and then it's back. And, you know, we just put it in a clear glass bottle and said Drew and Brian's whiskey. Um you know, how much could we sell that for and make a profit, but keep the cost down? Like how, I guess my question is how much of it is just that it's got Jim Rutledge's name on it. And then how much of it is that he just partnered with that Nike designer? That's my question. Right. Right. I mean, if the whiskey's good, that's great, but we could keep the cost down dramatically. That said, I don't mean to knock on marketing, like so much of product sales, brand development, like the way the industry is, born is on the idea of a brand and that it's not bad it's just weird is all like our, our brand allegiances it has so much to do with the status that is conveyed through the brand and has a little bit to do with the quality of the product itself but not everything very rare right does the quality and the brand like actually match up at the same level like apple probably but some people would debate me depending on their personality type okay like I, <laughs> I think for those of us who like a very user-friendly gadget apple does meet that quality level if you're like no i can figure it out and i need to be able to you know be able to put insert my own binary code in there like good for you then it probably isn't going to be your thing <laughs> but for somebody who really needs a high level of user experience very intuitive product apple does kind of hit that level but that's pretty rare you know like nike is is a huge brand you know are they the best shoes no like in terms of running shoes uh no like i the brooks is one of the top uh brands for running shoes and they have a absolute garbage brand like it's just brooks mm -hmm. and there's like nothing unique about the, <laughs> the brooks brand although they make some pretty dank running shoes uh, but nike you know out, sells bajillions more running shoes than brooks does um so anyway, quality is just a small piece. The brand building is an important part of the way our economic system works. That said, <laughs> how much of Blue Run's uh, reputation and or price point is a byproduct of the brand as developed by <laughs> Nike designer, who I forgot his name, and Jim Rutledge? Probably a decent amount. That's my rant. I'm done with that now. I'm just gonna sip this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. I would still be curious also to try. Um, run as, you know, regardless of whether it's watered down or not. Like you said, it's it, to me. I mean, I've been going after. I've been drinking a lot of this stuff, whatever it is, whoever distills it. You know, so, I that said it's hard to say I can justify buying them all. That's a lot to pay for a lot of bottles. That's that are all relatively the same. Yeah. When there are cheaper things on the market. Yeah. I mean, I would say I would buy another bottle of discovery batch four if I see it because I know it's super good and I'm, you know, I'm not paying that much more 
Uh, I, I actually can't get whiskey that's that old and barrel proof and that good for cheaper. I, I just can't. I don't know where I would get it. So, yeah, if you guys see Discovery Batch 4, you should buy it. If you've never spent $130 on whiskey, this is the one time I would tell you to do it. Save it for a special occasion. Pop it. Drink it. You won't be sorry. Uh, Josh Embry, we'll close with this. We're at an hour 45. We're approaching two hours. Um, and you're on Eastern time. So we'll close with this. This is a good question. Top three bottles y'all own. This is, you know, subject of a much larger, longer conversation. But we're going to simplify it. Because top three is like, well, what do you mean by top? Best? Favorite? Um, we're going to go with favorite your favorite three bottles in your collection right now. Maybe it has to do with the profile. Maybe it has to do with the story. Maybe it's not even open. But if you had to pick your favorite mm. three bottles, Brian, what would they be? Hmm. Now I'm trying to think. I can't just turn around and look at my collection. It's it's all the way over there. Um, so <laughs> yeah, you go from memory. Favorite. I can look three. at mine, which is helpful. Yeah, that is helpful. Yeah, and what's hard for me is, I, you know, we've been doing the bottle pop, so I have more open now, but I still have a lot that aren't open. So, that, right. yeah. That, yeah, that's a really tough question. Maybe we shouldn't tackle this. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's... I mean, I do know what my three f favorites are, and I do happen to have them. I mean, they're... Two okay, let's do this. Let's go. Important. Let's go. Three. Your three favorite open bottles. Your yours are going to look dramatically different from mine, just because of what you yeah. have open. But let's do that. Three favorite open bottles. Okay. <clears throat> uh, 2014 George T. Stag. Okay, which that's you know a legendary <laughs> bottle. Good for you. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, You're answering the question. A 2006. Thomas H. Handy. I'm going to go shoot myself in the face. <laughs> the, first, the, the first year they did Thomas H. Handy uh, is a ton of, ton of char. Now, I will also say, though, this bottle would go into the first version that you mentioned to me because when I was starting to dabble more in whiskey within the Louisville whiskey community, there's a local member of the community who invited me over for a fellowship. This is one of the bottles that he ended the fellowship on. And immediately I just was, I mean, this is before I, I had anything nice. It was all shelfers at that point. And I went like, Whoa, mm. what is this? It's, it, it was like beyond, it's not the fact that it's Thomas H. Handy. It, it, it went beyond the fact that it's a rye. It was just this incredible whiskey. Um, and then the, I would say, Number three would be a uh, barrel four of the 2019 King of Kentucky, which I still feel like is um, just uh, it's just super great. It's super special. It it it's it, it kind of reminds me. Now it's a little bit more charred, but it reminds me of. What I love about dusty whiskey, but in a modern product, it just it it hits everything for me. Okay. So I happen to own all those, but they are also, you know, it's because they were so great for me. I like I had to find those. So it does not answer the first question of yours. I'd have yeah. to think a little bit more on what would answer what would what would answer those. Sure. Yeah, so my whiskey is just because of what I have open right now. It's going to look dramatically different, So, which is good, I feel like. We're going to hit the spectrum a little bit here. So top three, what I have open, which granted is not – I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot for – like the standards here are just inappropriate. <laughs> it's like I would say, oh, I don't have that much whiskey open. Well, compared to who? The bourbon junkies? Like, come on. No, I have a lot of whiskey open compared to – normal human beings so one of my favorites um which i've got this one and then one more of the old pirate bottle so this is the non-age stated right after they changed and just the old elijah craigs were so solid so i'm probably gonna actually 
have a little sippy sip of that before I put it away. Um, yeah, and uh, these were available for a while. It's yeah, one of the ones that I first fell in love with, so it's deeply uh, sentimental. Another sentimental whiskey, but it's also very, very good. The 2018 Michter's Barrel Strength uh, Rye. I popped this on a golf trip with my dad and my brothers last year. It's my second uh, bottle of it. My I drank uh, another, well, I gave another bottle to my dad. I bought a half a case <laughs> actually uh, in Texas. They were just like, the dude was like, yeah, you can have however many you want of them. I'm like, thanks, man. That's great. They were like 80 bucks a piece. So that was awesome. <clears throat> so those two, I mean, what else? I mean, I've got good stuff open, but I don't have limited stuff, you know? And, and in terms of the flavor profiles, <sighs> while you're looking, I will answer the first part because I've had some time to think about it. Okay. So I would still say that that handy goes for the reason that I said of the guy who shared it for me. Um, but I do have an old rip van winkle that um i got uh from my dad uh and i got oh, it yeah, from huh? I, well i got it from my dad i i i, I traded a bottle um uh, with him but um i got him his first um old rip van winkle is his first he you know he he's a, a big bourbon drinker but mainly <laughs> just stuff that you can get from the store and really like shelf or old scout, but he likes to put cool bottles in his stuff. And he's always, he talked about Van Winkle before I even got into whiskey mm -hmm. and, um, and he had never acquired one. He had gone to some lotteries. He never, he never got one. And so uh, so we were finally able to get him an, an old rip Van Winkle, which is still not a pappy, but still, you know, he's got that on his shelf. And then me and mom, went around so every year on i want to say it's black friday all the krogers will have a couple of hours where you can try and go to as many krogers as you can within a short couple of hour period of time and put in for raffles and they draw mm -hmm. the next day and mom got drawn and i remember trying to you know i i had she got drawn she was going to go pick it up and i talked to her a couple of days later i was like hey did you end up picking that up she's like well no, Brian, you know, dad already has that bottle. And so I don't Mom. know that I'm going to pick it up. And so, I, and so I said, please go pick it up. Uh, you know, I, I want it. And so I have it and I, I have not, um, I've not cracked it yet. And, um, I, I just think it's really fun because it, re it reminds me of when we, we just spent, you know, three hours with the kids too, just like trying to drive to as many Kroger's as we could. Um, and uh, oh man, I had the I had the the last one too. But I for, oh, there was um one of the Willets that I was able to to pick. There was a dinner at Twenty One C, which is downtown. Uh, they did a, a a dinner where they paired um, some whiskeys and some cocktails. Um, Drew from Willet came out. He did a little a little speech. He talked about the the picks that he's done with Twenty One C. Um, but I I took. I was going to take Kristen to this event, my wife, um, but we couldn't find a sitter. And I ended up taking dad to it. So it was this nice dinner. Me and my dad do not spend a lot of time together, um, even over things like whiskey, of which he's really into. Should we Went to the dinner this? with me. What's up? I said, should we unpack that? No, no. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we... Um, he went to this dinner with me. We had a good time. And uh, just one of the bottles, I know that he was able to pick up from that event too. So it's a, a bottle he was able to pick that pick up. That was a, a, able to be a pick on. So that's kind of a special bottle to me too. Mm. Uh, so yeah, the other favorite bottle I have open would probably be the Eagle Rare store pick I have open. I mean, like, I've got some great bottles in my collection that will be opening here probably in the next year. You know, the Russell's Reserve 2003 was probably my greatest shelf pull ever at MSRP mm -hmm. on a day when I needed it. <laughs> Thought I was dying. I wasn't dying. Got good news from the doctor. Walked into a liquor store, and they had gotten an extra bottle of 
Russell's 2003 that they just set out on the shelf, and I was the first one in there. So that was amaze balls. Um, you know, my stag, which is the 2019, which people crap on, but I'm still excited to open it. I'll probably take that. Uh, well, my next golf trip with my dad and my brothers will probably be in New Hampshire. So I probably won't try and take stag on the plane just in case something happened to it. But at some point I'll open that with dad and the boys, the four roses. I'll open the 2020 here in a few weeks. And then we'll talk about that on most certainly on the live stream. Uh, the scouts, the old scouts I'm hanging on to because you can't get them anymore. Um, you know, I love Stag Jr. Uh, got a couple bottles of that, and, and I'll open one of those before too long, too, but I've had them before. So, yeah, I mean, it's like hard. I don't like picking favorites because it's like, well, there's so many that I love, or like, there's I'm look forward to opening, and uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. It's hard to pick favorites for sure, but I, I you know, I, I, most of what I drink on a daily basis is not the limited edition stuff. Maybe one day I'll end up with just far too much whiskey. And so I'm like, I got to drink these limited editions now. But at this point, I'm still quite content to knock back some Elijah Craig barrel proof or you know, that bookers. And that was 2020 batch two, which is very nutty. Not bad. Just very nutty. Nut central. Nut city. Liberty Not License says he got great blood work results today himself. Awesome. Yeah, that feeling, like getting cleared from, from the doctor, like, hey, you're fine. That's like, oh, that's a great feeling. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I went and saw a specialist last week to look at my issue. Um, that sounds bad. Sounds like it had something to do with my man piece. It had nothing to do with my man piece. Uh, <laughs> it's like it, it was an enlarged vein in my left armpit. And uh, I was worried about like potential blood clots or something. So they did like an ultrasound. And then I saw a vascular surgeon. Vascular surgeon said, seems like you're fine. And I'm like, oh, well, that's good. You know, if I drop dead, then it's on you. But yeah, it feels good to get good news from the doctor for sure. Um, Welcome to Steven too. Look, Steven says he's a beginner, beginner bourbon drinker. Was lucky to get an Eagle Rare. Enjoys the podcast. So welcome, Steven. Enjoy Neat Nation. There's some... Hopefully some great resources with the Drew P. Whiskey channel ongoing with the Interproof podcast. And appreciate you jumping on live with us. Yeah. Uh, squad, we're devolving now. I don't really feel like I have to jump off because I'm enjoying it. Uh, my wife tends to go to bed at like 930, so she's probably not waiting for me. We got 90 people still on. So this is wild card. We'll stay on if you have a few questions you want to throw at us to chat about. Brian, if you got to jump off, you can jump off, obviously. No, man, I'm solid. I mean, if you want to get rid of me, you know how to turn me off. But I'm uh, yeah, no, no, I mean, pour a little bit more. I, I set us up to sign off, but we had you know, 100 people. Now we have 87, 87 members of Neat Nation just hanging out. So this is your time, squad. We're going just live Q&A on this. I will say, check this while we're waiting for got this. I did. This is one of the Knob Creek picks I did with a, a local group. Uh, someone was asking what kind of stuff I have up there. I Ooh, took the uh, label. label. <laughs> so uh, there's a, a local group that's called KBB, and um, there's a there's a sticker idea we thought about doing. And I didn't know how appropriate it was, so I was like, "What if we just did a hologram sticker?" I was like, "I'll take the Knob Creek label." And I, I'll just manipulate it. So it, it overlays over top of the regular one. But um, to people who don't know that it's different, I mean, it to the eye, it looks very similar to, to regular Knob Creek. But I was able to put that it's a 10-year pick. There's like the group – let me see if I can tighten in on this group logo there where it normally has like a little Jim Beam seal. And then um, it's kind of it's subtle. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoy it. I like that. Uh, I like the metallic nature of it. I think of KGB when I hear KBB, which is different. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing. <laughs> uh, Tom says, uh, what's your famous Remus repeal batch? I have to go with batch four. A little bit more oaky, a little less orange, uh, because there's a lot of orange on that. Uh, that uh, repeal batch three. Batch four, yeah, a little bit, a little richer. So batch four. Um, Brad Simmons. I won't lie. I have tried Remus. I've tried a sample. Once. Oh, that's it? Yeah, oh, man. That's, that's it. Pretty, yeah, that's I enjoy it. it. 
the well, I enjoy the Remus repeal. The Remus small batch, I do not like. Oh, crap. Um, but I've had the barrel picks, or I've had take it back. I've had one barrel pick from Timers. I got two bottles because it was very good. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, Liberty not licensed. Did Brian distill that VIP in his back room? Uh, why do you ask that? Because it kind of looks like he slapped a label on a big tall bottle of moonshine. Uh, uh well, hold on. There's a I did I did not um distill that in my back room. I think it'd be cool if I did. I I will say there's um there's a good question I don't want to miss. In Madeira Diary said, what makes Discovery 4 so special? Yeah, that was the next question on the list. We were going to get there. Um, so I've got the batch four right here. And besides the fact that it tastes amazing, let me just read you the breakdown of what this is. It's 55% Kentucky bourbon. That's 13 years old. That's a 74% corn, 18% rye mash bill. Then it's 37% Kentucky bourbon. That's 15 years old. 78.5% corn, 13% rye mash bill. And that's 8% Kentucky bourbon that's 10 years old. So 37% is 15 years old or more, and then 55% of it is 13 years old. So it's an old bourbon that tastes fantastic. It is Entry Proof Podcast endorsed, and we weren't paid to endorse it. That's what makes it special. It's an amazing blend, too. They just did a really good job putting it all together. And their their you process. Can, you can, if you haven't listened to the podcast we did with Dan Calloway, you can hear a little bit about the process they use for these special blends. And it's really cool, really awesome. What were you gonna say? Brian? Yeah, Javi. We got to meet him at the very end. He's like their be beverage coordinator. He's the guy who designed or he did the blend for their Discovery Two, which is also delicious. Um, yeah, their process for how they the select those is really cool. The juice in that, I think we've determined, is a questionable source, Barton and Beam, I think is what that is. So when you hear that, you're like generally unassuming, but it shows you some cool stuff that can go on with blends. If you like, I don't want to, it doesn't taste like Four Roses, but if you're like, oh man, I can never get a Four Roses limited edition, th this is a really well done blend with old whiskeys with one of those like, media fish proof points, you know, it's not too low. It's not blazing your palate. Like it just has a lot of good stuff going for it at a really reasonable price. Uh, Brad Simmons says, what's your thoughts on old granddad One Fourteen? It's not really my jam. Like the <coughs> Jim beam, herbaceous nuttiness like bookers brings a decent enough amount of oak and sweetness sometimes that i like okay i like bookers knob creek it kind of takes a step back on that herbaceous nuttiness but old granddad is actually a different mash bill from bookers and knob creek uh it's the same mash bill they use for basil hayden's which i just generally don't really vibe on uh it's very um uh, funky and kind of dill forward People love Old Granddad 114, so don't get me wrong. Like some people really like they get jacked on that. It's a nice proof point for the price you pay, like $22. So if you like it, great value. It's just not my favorite profile. Uh, you have any thoughts on Old Granddad 114, Brian? Yeah, also not a huge fan of it, but that's just me personally. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, have you guys thought of a cool label for our pick? Uh, we are working on it. So we're working on some star puns. Uh, you know, we thought of Starboy or Ziggy Stardust. We're playing off a few. So if you guys, yeah, have I will say it, you said that it was pretty off brand, which it is. But, um, I immediately, when I first was considering doing Starlight, this is unrelated to Neat Nation, but just, you know, months ago I was, toying around with a weekend Starboy cover uh because i used to call people who were obsessed with starlight star boys but you oh, know nice. how they with, with the is yeah. um and so it's this picture of starlight or uh starboy cover weekend sitting there and instead of his chain his like cross chain it's got uh the starlight logo so that's a fun one but yeah Zig ziggy stardust is another one here I yeah, that, yeah, I will say the second one that I sent you that's just the the bolt. I mm -hmm. think it'd be a cool like 
cut design. I like the ones that aren't like a rectangle or a circle. It's just a big old lightning bolt on the side. Um, so I wouldn't be too opposed to that. We're working on it. See where we We're end working up. Working on it. Yeah, gonna make it good. Gonna come out of the door with a banger. Uh, Tom said he opened batch two and batch four of Remus tonight. He agrees four is better. Uh, man. Archie says sipping on a Buffalo Trace store pick. Good for you, dog. Kyle says if you had Discovery batch three, I did not. Batch four was the first one I was able to try. What about you, Brian? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. I'm reading comments. Have you tried Discovery Batch 3? No, I've not. I've heard good stuff. My buddy uh, tried it. He he didn't have any of them, and he was able to get three when I was telling him he should get four, and then he finally got a four, and I think he got a two also. And so um, he might have been the – no, he didn't. He's not the one who sent me the sample of the two. But he did say he thinks he prefers four over three. Um, I know that Mash and Drum seemed to prefer four over three, even though he thought it was three that he was selecting. I think Matt may have done the same thing, which makes me curious because um, it, it has MGP in Discovery 3, and so I would assume it would just be uh, spicier. But um, if, it, if it can very easily be assumed to be four it sounds like it'd be good i'd like it but i do like two a lot it has great profile i mean i'm i'm afraid i'm gonna have to end up finding them all because i just gotta get like that Go it's just forward. it's just the again it check it just checks the boxes of things that i like to drink full pokemon on that were you did you purposely skip this question that eric had asked eric had asked what's been the bourbon that wowed you the most with little expectation going in and then the biggest letdown. Okay. Well, we'll get there. I think I've answered that biggest letdown a million times and it's Michter's barrel strength or not. It's Michter's toasted bourbon a hundred times over. Um, real quick though. Uh, one other question. I didn't skip that on purpose. I just didn't see it or maybe I haven't gotten to it yet. There's a lot of questions in here when I opened it up for questions. One was uh, what do you think of Garrison? Go watch the end of the stream last week where I absolutely just destroyed uh, Garrison <laughs> Brothers. Um, it was a single barrel bourbon, I think, that I tasted last week. And oh my word, it was just wretched. So, like, I'm not in a hurry to get back to Garrison. Um, I'm super thankful. Like, uh, uh, I think that was Fred who sent that. It was Fred or. Yeah, pretty sure it was Fred who sent that, which, I mean, Fred's a great guy. Um, he's on in the chat. Um, so super thankful for it. Like, glad to be able to try it, um, but I just wasn't feeling it. <laughs> you, know, you have those where it's like, hey, yeah, hey, why don't you try this? I'm always glad to try it. So don't, don't take my disdain for the product as a lack of gratitude for being able to try it. I'm, I'm stoked right. on the, the chance to try it for sure. All right, let's get back to that other question. We may not get to all these uh, questions tonight, squad. Um, so you feel free to drop them in another chat. But I am fading faster now. We'll see how much longer we can go. Uh oh. All right. So yeah, I'm a I'm kind of an early to bed, early to rise guy, and I need a lot of sleep. So the que what was the question again? Remind me, Brian. Uh, so yeah, it's twofold. It was. Doo -doo 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 -doo. What's been the bourbon that wowed you the most with little expectation and then the biggest letdown? Oh, man, you're falling asleep here on me. Just taking deep breaths. Wowed me the most with little expectation. I mean, you know, honestly, the biggest surprise to me was uh, Bardstown Discovery Batch 4. I mean, we're sitting in that room, so, like, I will open that again, but I, I, I try to be discerning and we had tasted fusion and I was like, you know, it's fine. It's, it's all right. And then we had discovery and I'm like, Whoa, like that was really good. <laughs> um, and I can't remember a time I was that surprised by something. Cause I hadn't heard hype around discovery series, you know, that it was generally good. You know, that's what I heard. This is good. It's good sourced bourbon, but that was, it was 
better than good. Uh, yeah, I think that was probably the time I was blown away the most. Um, trying to think of another. Anyway, what do you got? You got anything? I mean, there's there's only a couple of things that, that stick out to me. I remember, uh, well, I won't say that one. Um, I won't say what man. one. Well, I, I'm fine. I mean, so I was at a I was at a buddy's house, and I mean, it's still hard to find. So that's what I hate. I hate about talking about things that are that are hard to get. But I was I was at a buddy's house during a tasting. I forget what I was presently drinking, but I wasn't really feeling it. And he was like, "Oh, you should try this," which was a uh, William Heaven Hill Twelve Year. Now, I generally think of all heaven hill products the william heaven hill line seems to go under the radar i don't yeah. hear a lot of people talk about it and well, so it's, hard he's like, to oh, get. Try this. I mean, it's not that hard to get you got to go to the distillery to get it that's the deal yeah right so it's just not something i followed he's like oh try this this was the one that was 12 years and it was barrel proof it was like 134.4 proof and it was awesome i i honestly think if i if i were trying to think back it might be the single product that made me go Oh, there's more to Heaven Hill than what I knew, what I what I thought I knew. You know what I mean? Like I had sworn off Elijah Craig barrel proofs, wasn't a fan How of Larceny. That? Be well, that's that's what I was saying earlier before my channel froze with the Evan Williams 12 year. To me, when I first started getting into into Heaven Hill and everything that I could taste on the market, it was too hot or too nutty or too dry. It just didn't. It didn't have. It, it didn't have the characteristics of of what I look for, and I've learned that there are. You can still have the Heaven Hill nuttiness, but in a really pleasing way. And there are products that they have that don't really showcase that. And it is still true. There are Elijah Craig Barrel Proof batches that are hot as crap. They're just really hot, and that's not great to me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And there, with you. and there yeah. are Elijah Craig barrel proofs that are very drinkable, and uh, even some older, uh, you know, of the Elijah Craig barrel proofs with the old labels. There's some just banger bottles that are hands down could could go neck and neck against old stags and stuff. Just really tasty products. So that was just one to me that I just was like, man this bottle uh and and it kind of reopened me back up to to evan williams stuff now this i don't want to say this has been the biggest letdown but i had a lot of high expectations last year when everyone was talking about that new master's keep the 17 year bottled and bond wall oh, yeah. i never gotta try i it. hate i hate that bottle oh man that you're it's, one of the few from what i've heard i know and that's what's weird I, but i just can't do it it's so medicinal and it has this like weird smoky thing to it. I just, I visited, I tried that. I've tried probably 10 ounces of that bourbon across like t 12 different tries of it. And it's just mm. a couple of them, a couple of times I drank it. I was like, oh, this is kind of nice. But for the most part, I'm just like, I can't do it. Can't, can't do, do it. it. Huh? No. Nope. Interesting. Uh, we had a question about which is better, batch 14 or batch 15 at Stag Jr. Um, Brad, I wish I had tried them both side by side. Like, you know, I've Stag's super hard to come by up here. So I have batch 14. I don't have batch 15. Batch 14 is unopened right now. It's, yeah, it's is a really batch special, 14 special the one occasion that came out. for me. What? Is, is 15 the most recent? Uh, maybe. I think it came so, out. It came out late last year, so maybe the most recent. Either that or batch, batch fifteen will be super fresh. Well, that's what I'm curious about because I heard that the, whatever the one is that came out around the same time that 2019 George T. Stag came out. That well, Stag Junior like is thirteen or fourteen. Then, well, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out which one it is. I'm pretty yeah, sure batch I've tried fifteen 14. was batch fifteen was fall 2020. Um, I'm pretty sure it's good. 
I'm pretty sure 14 is also good. I might lean towards 15 from recollection if I'm got the batches right, but I might be mistaking 13 and 14. Yeah, you might. I yeah, again, I'm, sorry, but I wish Marlin, I would have I tried I any wish of I the down home. home sorry, go ahead. Toasted. Ah, uh, Eric. Um I want to say so you might correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, was one of those an LBC pick? Because I think it was, and I'm pretty sure I tried one, and I I can't talk to you about the tasting notes, man. I did; I, they were not good. They're not favorable. Not favorable. I don't even know what that is. Uh, so down, you, are you not you're not familiar with Down Home? Is it strictly no. local area? Okay, well, they ain't here. Um, yeah, I actually don't even know how to go into um, history on the brand. I I could maybe dig it up to give you some more information about it it is a local local brand um modern thirst the the guy does stuff with modern thirst too i guess um has some sourced products has done some toasted stuff but i feel like he's done some short toasts of product man i i, I honestly couldn't tell you i've not followed him a lot that's one of those brands that i feel like no i've not i i would have to get more information before i could talk about it mm. Haven't had great experiences with the down home stuff. I have tried. I have tried several of their regular bourbon batches. Uh, was not a fan. Very hot. Uh, I've tried like a toasted barrel. Very much not a fan. Um, I could I could give them another go. You know, try some more stuff. But from what I have tried, don't love it. Looks like we got some whiskey headed our way from JD. He's got, said he's going to send us some Redwood Empire American whiskey. He said hidden. Yeah, JD. Down. I'm sorry. I saw that. I saw your message on IG. I, mean, I had not had a chance already, to respond. Yeah, JD's a I'm big, big supporter supporter of the channel. So I've got some uh, smoke wagons from JD, uh, small batch, and their standard release. Um, uh, so yeah, be pump to bottle pop those here before too long at some point uh you got some folks in the in the chat talking about your all's coffee that's all that okay. bolivia dropped this morning i'm all about that Bol i want some of that bolivia okay. i need to order some yeah, no i no, i can bring you some i'll bring you some down um but yeah so we launched that box set so that bolivia the coffee will release the coffee on its own next week but that box set is pretty cool um if you guys want to try a really unique coffee experience, we just launched this box set. There's only 150. There's probably like 75 left right now. Um, it's got a pound of this Bolivian coffee. And then from the same producer, there's a coffee flower tea. So uh, coffee trees, they blossom before they grow their cherries. And coffee is the pit of these cherries on these trees. So the, the trees blossom and it's really aromatic, like lovely smelling blossoms. So they harvest the blossoms on young trees that they're not going to harvest the cherries from. And then they dry those and then they make a tea out of it. So we got this tea from the same producer. It's actually from the geisha tea, which, of course, uh, Brian knows all about geisha. And then there's cascara, which is actually dried coffee cherries. So then you make a tea out of that. So that's from the same producer. So we've got these three really unique beverages from the same producer all in one box set. The coffee itself, the geisha flower tea, and then the cascara dried cherry tea. So really cool box set. Um, is, the you know, geisha, we, is the geisha flower tea the dried flowers? I know yeah, that sounds correct. dumb, yep. but... Yeah, that's yep. what it is, yep. So yeah, pretty pretty awesome box set, and we try and price these things really reasonably. So it's not like you know eighty dollars; it's actually like thirty five dollars for this. You get a whole pound of coffee, and then there's like five servings of tea, maybe not quite five, in each tin. Really reasonable. If you want a dope coffee experience, check it out StoneCreekCoffee.com. It's on the homepage right now. And if you guys, if you guys get that, and you want to try a dope Cascara soda recipe. Shoot me a line. I could teach you how to take that, uh, take a brew of your cascara and turn it into syrup. You can connect with CO2. Nice. Get all good. I mean, sparkling. Carlos says, what's the best way to talk shop? Which profile on IG or directly through Patreon? 
Uh, Patreon is fine. Also, you know, you can just uh, start a chat with both Brian and me. Um, so at Abandoned Bourbon and at Drew P. Whiskey. That's a great place to talk shop there. Yep. Can, I will say, too, so we um, we are accessible on IG. One thing I was talking to Drew about is uh, some of the stuff that we could do on Patreon for the, those of you who do support us on Patreon. Uh, I think it would be really fun to... Um, Maybe it's not that fun to do more bottle pops or just like little, oh, little no. reviews that, more. Oh no, yeah, it's happening. It's definitely happening. Get some get some exclusive lives for you all, or just exclusive videos. Um, or you know, maybe we we send each other some blind samples and then go through a taste of them or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, we could do on there to, to some engage. Legality issues with like sending samples in exchange for money. So we're going to be careful on that. <laughs> I'm a chief yep. legal counsel for the Entry Proof Podcast. <laughs> uh, I'm all. I was super hesitant on barrel picks. I'm like, let's make sure we got our retailers like uh, figured out. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Anyway, we'll be super careful there. But we're definitely going to do some bottle pops exclusive to Patreon. Some tastings, tasting notes, etc. Uh, and you know, as, as we figure out how to do cool stuff, we'll definitely bring it, you know, to all kinds of channels. We don't really want to keep things from the nation that, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe you're like, I'm not going to support a YouTube channel. No problem. Not, not an issue, dog. Uh, we still want to deliver some cool stuff to the, the squad out there. So, but at the same time, if you're supporting the channel, you deserve a little something extra. So we're going to make sure. Oh, uh, Liberty, Liberty Not License is saying he wants a barrel proof bourbon with a marijuana nose, Kona coffee notes. You are looking for an indigenous rye from Starlight. It is, is, it is going to give you that. I pass. Dude, I do not like the smell of pot. Um, not one bit. <laughs> it's just, nope. And I no, smell a lot of it. At coffee competitions, you just walk past somebody who's been hitting a blunt, and you're like, "It smell." I mean, the skunk. It smells skunky. Like that's just there's nothing that's like, "Oh yeah, I want to hit that." Because it smells so bad. <laughs> Granted, I mean, well, at some point, undoubtedly, maybe we'll do this on Patreon, but a little bit of life story, like background. Um, you know, I was not exposed to marijuana until after college, like. So it's a long story. Hey, you chuckle. I, Keep it to yourself. <laughs> no, I thought you were gonna say on. I thought you were gonna say on Patreon we we're gonna smoke pot. <laughs> That's, <laughs> what I you, That's not what I thought you were going with it. No, no. Uh, that's not what I was insinuating. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle said, but Drew, you use the term dank constantly. Well, yeah, it's because the kids use the term dank. It means cool. I mean, obviously, it has associations with marijuana. That doesn't mean that I have associations with marijuana. Kyle says, if you like the way IPA smells, you like the way pot smells. That is not accurate. No. I mean, certainly that there is a piney funk to an IPA. But like you can't tell me the chemical makeup of the of that is the same. Anyway, nice, nice. Yeah, I feel like that's a good way to wrap it up. We'll wrap it up there. <laughs> Nothing says or, we don't smoke pot like putting on our headbands and our sunglasses for yeah. this live video talking about whiskey. No doubt. So we're at 10, 10 almost ten thirty. That means we've been going for two and a half hours. We will. Yeah, we'll almost almost eleven thirty. You, you do not like me to sleep on on Fridays. Well, and yeah, we got to get the energy. We got to bank some energy for our tasting, our marathon tasting, when we select the first barrel for the Entry Proof Podcast. Uh, when first. we put our stamp of approval on there for Neat Nation, they got to know that what they're getting is top notch. So that's right. Squad, thanks for joining us tonight. That was fun. Really enjoyed it. I still feel pretty good, actually. Like I was getting sleepy, but I feel like I caught the second wind. Probably go watch some golf content. Looks like we're you. going for another half hour. No, no we'll hang it up. We can, I mean, we've got to save some content too. Like we got to keep people coming back. <laughs> but, true. Yeah. So if you guys haven't already, make sure you check out the latest episode of the Entry Proof Podcast, Bourbon Hunting in Louisville. Next week, it will be fun. I'm not sure we're going to have a live stream next Thursday. We'll see. We'll be together, but we got to record podcasts. We got to pick a barrel. So no guarantee on a live stream next Thursday yet. Just stay tuned into the Entry Proof Podcast Instagram handle 
at Injury Proof Podcast, or you can follow me at Drew B. Whiskey. Follow Brian at Abandoned Bourbon. That's where you're going to get all the news you need from us on what is happening, when, and where. That's all I got. I mean, if, if you're not already, but you want to support the channel, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash entry proof podcast. That's a way to make sure that you have access to barrel picks in the future. And you're going to get some pretty dank swag that we'll be developing here in the very near future, including glassware and threads t-shirts. So those will be Patreon exclusives that we might sell to other people. Half exclusive. <laughs> Bottom line is you're guaranteed these threads and glassware. You don't have to pay more for them, but we certainly appreciate your support. So that that's it. That's all I got. Brian, you got anything else for the nice people? No, man. I'm square. Okay, cool. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Uh, in the midst of all the cold and all the everything going on out there, be kind to folks. Be gracious. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And remember to keep it neat. Cheers, guys.